So, I just watched Anthony's interview on Joey Barnett's channel. What's it called? Uh, the Switched On. Shout out to Switched On. We're going to put that link in the description box if you want to watch it. Whenever you do an interview, you come out and you think, shit, I could have said this, could have said that. So, this might be a long one. And really appreciate Anthony coming in. He's done over 10 years in the system. He's turned his life around after he was touched by a victim impact statement that went melted the ice around his heart and he decided to change his ways and now he's just on the straight and narrow wants to be a good family man and um, i'm sure you're going to be very successful because you know, this time around yeah definitely you're a good speaker brilliant behind the camera from what i saw in that first one i think people are going to be really gripped um by this story then so oh you're right to pull that on silent yeah, yeah, thanks <laughs> So any links for Anthony will be in the description box below this video. And you're thinking about starting a channel as well, aren't you? I am indeed. Can people contact you on social media? Yeah, they can. They can get me on Facebook, Twitter, um, just my name, Anthony Roberts. And yeah. and uh, So Facebook, Twitter, all those will be in the description box. Twitter, Instagram, normal media, really. All right. So the madness begins in Anthony's life when he was one year old and his dad slit his throat. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to describe? Can I mean, can you even remember? I, I, that, that it's, it's weird. I don't remember the actual whole. I remember it in pictures, if that makes yeah. sense. And I remember uh, not the whole incident happening. I don't remember what happened. I don't remember what happened afterwards or beforehand. But I remember pitch frames in my, in my head. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Of, yeah. of, my, of my man picking us up, picking me and my brother up, blood everywhere, mm. and then leaving the house. And um, yeah, and that was. I didn't see him for a little while. But uh, I have heard quite a few. Obviously, my mum told me reasons why that happened. Um, but that's a bit personal to be putting out online, you know what I mean? But it, it was just no good, man. Why do you do that to your kids? Like, mm. slice your throat is one thing. But then to pick your kids up whilst your neck's bleeding, a lot of clarity. You can imagine your neck being slit open. So he grabbed you guys while he was going around with the slit throats. Yeah, picked us up. Love you, boys. Off you go. So it was a suicide later. attempt, was it? Well, you could call it that. He it wasn't a bloody very good one, was it? Because yeah. he lived. <sighs> you know what I mean? But yeah, yeah. Stupid man, really. Yeah. Know? And then the next incident was at age three with the baby yeah, well, A lot happened between that, obviously. Yeah, my dad please go over it. cut his throat. My mum obviously left him after that. You would, wouldn't you? He's a bloody lunatic. Why'd you do that? Yeah. Uh, so my mum's left him. Um, so I've been aware anyway so I've been told it was no good anyway never used to be good for my mum he used to always run off with her money and stuff like that so not a good guy she'd give him rent money and he wouldn't freaking pay the rent get her in debt you know so his morals weren't in check anyway you know what I mean um, so obviously after he left my mum obviously carried on didn't it? she had carried on to live live with me and my brother um, and then she met my stepdad and that's basically history between them. And then, Do you know how they met? Uh, I believe in the pub, somewhere in, in Kilburn, somewhere like that. That's how it used to be with the old Irish lot, isn't it? You know what I mean? Because obviously my stepdad's Irish. My mum's like Irish descent sort of thing. Um, and uh, basically them two got together. They've been together a couple of years. Uh, I was around free, free mark. Um, and my mum's gone out to do something, run to the shop or done some errand or something. She left me with a babysitter. <clears throat> Babysitter abused me, um, abused me, uh, and then obviously when my mum come, I, I told my mum. My mum went to the police. Uh, is this a male or a female babysitter? Male, male, male babysitter. babysitter. Um, but this story gets see if, what I never spoke about with the other guy that we've done a podcast on. The story's mad. This is a whole mental situation. Being abused is one thing, um, but how the police dealt with it and the social services and um, and the hospital is a completely the way they fucking done it was a mess so i've been abused my mom's took me to the hospital and they they didn't believe me at first so my mom's like yeah like this is bullshit he was abused my three-year-old ain't going to tell me this and if that didn't happen so obviously then she's she wants a second opinion she got the second opinion they said yeah i was mm -hmm. i was abused so then the police got involved now the police got involved and um basically what they've done is the police have then threatened my mum this kid that abused me this 14 year old boy that abused me was apparently a rent boy 
and was in London in and around the Paddington area and um and basically because that, that happened he was he would pop over and chill with us I don't know how this all worked out because I I was a kid you know what I mean but this is what I've been told that he used to come over and play with us and all that and chill with us and then obviously then he's abused me gone to the authorities they've not they've not believed my mum so then we got another some another doctor they've said yep it definitely did happen so then the police got involved the police have then turned around and threatened my mum and said my mum is not allowed to go nowhere near because this is the neighbour that abused me the babysitter was the neighbour so then we've now been threatened the police said to my mum that she needs to move house yeah this is mad shit this is deep stuff man proper deep when I sit back and I think about it it's fucking terrible how they treated my mum so there's no injustice I never got injustice for this at all ever so then they've um, basically threatened my mum uh, my dad apparently was on the scene at this time I can't remember him I don't remember seeing him but I remember him I remember being told that he was run down and tried to smash up this pedo git yeah which is understandable because if anyone touched my kid they wouldn't be trying they'd be dead there would be no trying about it I would have killed them and that would have been the end of the story like, but on this occasion they didn't they didn't they didn't do enough anyway in my eyes but um, yeah the police have basically told my mum if anything happens to these people then you'll be you'll be arrested uh, so the social services got involved and my mum had her hell with the social services obviously being abused is one thing but then having social services come in and try and just fucking undermine everything she did like she was a hard worker all right she she weren't like i don't blame her for my abuse and that she did not know that that geezer was a nonce in it we didn't know that she didn't know that but then what social services did because my my i started acting mad started doing crazy things like hanging out the window like climb out the window hang out the window like a three-year-old lunatic you know what i mean so you're hanging out the window you're setting fires to the house you're pulling washing machines out you like i burnt my mum's house down so the whole house is literally ablaze we nearly died in that and then um it was mad because whilst i was doing that i was getting treatment because i started to become a, a real handle to do like people couldn't deal with me i was very aggressive i smashed the whole thing i smash everything up literally smash everything to pieces and I, I started going to these places for kids with psychiatric problems and um i've ended up going to these places and it was weird on this one particular time i was being restrained by four grown men in a white padded room actually in a white padded room it's one of these special needs schools for kids that are, are going off key off of their nut and obviously i was going off my nut so they've put me into this padded room four grown ass men big men like ourselves you know what i mean handling mm. a five-year-old boy like restraining him obviously that is traumatizing us in itself could you imagine having four people mm. who, like big men holding a five-year-old kid down and all he wants to do is get to his mum yeah you know so it is and, and that went on for years back and forth back and forth from one one place to the next from one um institute to another and basically in the end social services said to my mum it's like You've got a choice you can either give him to us and have some kind of control over his life or we're just going to take him mm. so my mum's like i don't want to lose him completely she can't hold she can't take care of me because obviously i'm too volatile i'm a fucking danger to everybody i'm smashing shit up i'm burning stuff i'm hanging out of windows i'm causing a lot of grief you know what i mean so then where she's done is um she sent me to boarding school it wasn't they well i got told it was voluntary but the way i understand it now is it weren't voluntary for my mum it was either you give him up or we're taking him so basically uh i've ended up going to um i went up going to this boarding school which was out in a, a place called uh, the marby bush in oxford which i remember as being a fucking madhouse like the gaff was it was just a big building a big white building in the middle of nowhere and it was just, it was mad. The kids were doing mad shit there. The staff were doing mad shit there. It was just a bad place. And the memories that I have from there are not nice. Like there was a lot of abuse in them places. Like things that I'm, I won't talk about because I'll end up crying now. And I don't, I'm not, I've not come here to do that. You know what I mean? And obviously awesome. I'm a fucking strong man. I still got emotions, you know what I mean? But yeah, so we've gone through boarding school. I was there for a couple of years or so. And I've ended up, um, 
I've ended up uh, doing the mass runaways, like the kids. Like basically, you imagine you've got a boarding school with 200, 300, 400 kids in it. I would, there'd be like me and 20 other kids and we're all like six years old. So you could imagine these nutty six year olds, yeah. And we're like, we ended up, we managed to just do mass runaways, literally. <laughs> like, so you'd have like three members of staff trying to chase all these kids and we'd just be scattering everywhere. We'd be over the fences, gone. Mad, good times, man. Oh, funny times, as I can yeah, remember. Yeah, it gets you through it, the humour, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, that's, how, that's how you've got to remember it. Mm. If obviously, you've got all the good and all the bad, isn't it? But if you try and remember the good things, like the runaways, to be fair, I find that funny. You know, I look back at it and think, fucking hell, loads of little kids off doing a runner, like get away from them lot. It's funny times, man. Right. So at some point, did you end up in the same place as Darren Jeffrey, the Rainbow Woods thing? Where's that? Um, Darren Jeffrey was um, abused in one of these homes. I thought Ash said that you perhaps were in the same place as him, I was, but maybe I, not. I don't know that geezer's name, but okay. I was in quite a lot of homes. I was in the ones in central London. I was in uh, Sherlam Road, um, Beechcroft House, 4 Sherlam Road, 5 Claverton Street, and loads around Westminster. Like, there's so many to mention. There's literally loads. Plus, I was in Streatham, South London. Uh, where else was I? I was up in... Uh, Crystal Palace. And it got particularly bad in Kent. Kent, um, yeah, well, when I moved to Kent, um, basically what it was, I've, I've, I was in I was in, um, in boarding school in Oxford for a, for a good while. Um, and then one night I just, I was bored. I don't know what kept me awake, but I was up and I was rooting around the school trying to find shit to do, like being a little pain in the ass as I normally was. So anyway, I've got into the school I found, I'm just going to the office and I'm hunting around looking for stuff. And I found like, um, like a little cupboard where they keep all their car keys in it. So I steal the car, I keys. I go up, say goodbye to one of the girls that's there that I was talking to, um, one of my little buddies. And then um, I've got in the car and I've managed to get this car going. I was, I was only young, I think I was around the nine age. And uh, I've got this car and I'm driving it up the lane in Oxford, I've ended up smashing into a um, oh. into a, a fence. Waited there, staff come and got me. So then I've been kicked out of that place, um, and that's when I've come back to London. And the first of all, I went to Beach. I think it was Sherlin Road first. And I don't know if that's the guy that went to that gaff, but I know there was. I only found out later on in life that it was a bad gaff mm. for kids. But where I was so volatile, like I was a violent kid, like I was. A violent little child you know what i mean i was smash everything to pieces and literally i was very angry so I, like the pedo shit didn't really happen to me that much in them places it's only when i got a bit older when i moved to kent that's when um that shit happened to me and the perpetrators in this case were a member of staff and also one of the residents well i believe i what i believe it was it was a, a child from another care home that I because I was in boarding school for a few years before I went to Kent, and th I met a kid there in boarding school, and he used to always play with dolls. He used to always play with Barbie dolls. It was weird. It was like it weren't no norm in it. Like us boys, we weren't playing with Barbie dolls. We were climbing trees and trying to break things up and all that. But this particular kid was always playing with Barbie dolls and whatnot. And then um, we've uh, we've. He's ended up, I've ended up meeting him in Kent and I started chilling with him because obviously I'm like, fucking now I've met this geezer, I've known this guy, we was on boarding school together, do you know what I mean? Thinking he was a pal and all that. And then obviously they've taken me out. I've gone out with this geezer um, and we've met this other geezer and then he's ended up, they've both ended up taking me out to some fields up in Kent um, and they ended up abusing me and I didn't say anything to no one. I didn't say nothing to no one for years, mate. I didn't say anything until I got to Dovegate because... Like, I was very ashamed of that. Like, I was ashamed of that one. I felt dirty. You know what I mean? I felt ashamed. Like, I felt ashamed about the first time when I was a, when I was free, but you're free, innit? Because I was a bit older, I could have got away. And I blame myself because I didn't run. I didn't run away. I should have really gone crazy like I would at any other time. But I think fear is what allowed that shit to happen. 
Do you still blame yourself or have you like realized that you were very no, young no, still? No, I definitely don't blame myself now. Obviously, I know that weren't my choice. Yeah. Obviously, I was. I remember looking back at the feelings that I had at that time and I was shit in my pants, man. Of course, yeah. Uh, you've got two bigger people. One's a grown man. I'm only like a kid. Yeah. I'm like nine years old, mate. So I'm a little child. Scared little kid, you know what I mean? They've took me out to this place, done nastiness. And then, and then I had to live with that. And not tell anyone was a burden in itself because... Chrissy, who used to look after me, and I used to love this lady. This lady was like, she was like the only one who actually gave me real mother time, if that makes sense. <clears throat> so I had something to look forward to. So Chrissy was the one who showed me, and I couldn't tell her. I couldn't tell her. I couldn't tell her because I felt so fucking disgusted that I just couldn't speak about it. And I didn't speak about it. I didn't speak about it until I got to, when was it? When I was in Dovegate, 2000 and... 14 i think it was did that make you more violent and um, you're behaving more crazy definitely definitely well you've got all these things inside you want to talk about them but you don't know how to in it you like you want to get this shit off your head and you don't know how to it's like it's hard it's when you, when you want to say something but you don't know how to say it like that there is a burden in itself you know what I mean? If you've got things on your mind and you don't know how to get them things out of your head or you don't know how to talk or you don't know how to interact, then it's just, it destroys you, doesn't it? It makes you bitter. And no one gives you the tools to deal with it at that age. Well, that's right. You know, you, and, and that's my opinion on the, on, the, on the system as in like the social services and stuff like that because what they do is like they take these young kids away from parents at young ages. So see, if they had got their way, they would have got me off my mum a lot younger than five, uh, six years old. They would have got me younger, you know. So when they had me from the age of six up until 16, they never taught me absolutely no life skills whatsoever. Mm -hmm. You didn't teach me how to fucking put on a washing machine. These are just basic living skills, you know. Everybody needs them. You know how to budget your thing. When you go shopping, Sean, you've got a budget, ain't you? You know what I mean? So it's just common sense. So they don't teach you anything. And then when you're coming out of care, you, where you don't know anything, you don't know how to pay bills, you don't know how to pick up a book and read a menu, do you know what I mean? Because you don't know how to read and write, do you know what I mean? Because they don't teach you these basic necessities, you know, these skills that you need in your life, they don't, they never taught me anyway. And um, you come out of care and then you don't know how to, you don't know how to live properly. So therefore you don't know how to work, you can't fill in application forms for a job, you don't know how to fill in a piece of paper to get your driver's license. These are just common things, you know? So, I've come out of jail, a wreck, go straight into crime. And that's that revolving door again, you know, like you, you take the people away. And I say it's social services is a business and their business is kids. And I say that for this reason, yeah. Social services take the kids off of the people, yeah, the family. I believe they get money for each child they take. Yeah, so then they, they put that, care, that kid into the system. Then you've got all the carers and all that. That's all business. It's all money, yeah. Taxes. Keeps Just like the, the private prisons. Yes, mate, exactly that. And then you've got they come out of care totally clueless with life, don't know how to do nothing, then they go into committing crime, which then pays for uh, freaking prison staffs and prisoners. And then they've got, I think someone said to me, it costs £46,000 a year or something like that to keep a prisoner in jail. Well, if you've got 100,000 mm -hmm. prisoners in a jail cell, think of the money. And it is a revolving door. And it's just the business is, is bad. It's not good. Well, you're confirming one of the messages on this channel, which is that... Um the, the kids come out of abused homes and then they they go into care yeah well they the, the abuse can often be even worse it's worse it is 100 percent worse and then they've not given any tools to deal with it so ah. they get on drugs of course to self-medicate yeah. because they got this trauma and the men usually go into drug dealing or robbery to finance that's it right. that's right and the females often become sex workers yeah. prostitution yeah. drugs and it's just a it's a world of shit, literally, and it, it's all avoidable. You know what I mean? Like if the system done what they think they, well, they try to portray that they are saviors of us and saviors of kids, but they're fucking really not, mate. If you look at it statistically, how many people come out of care and end up doing brilliant with their life? Not many. We've not met any, have we? Do you know what I mean? Not many. Like the, I've, the thing is, yeah, and this is what I mean by it's a business, yeah? You've got myself, yeah? I go to care. I come out of care. I end up having kids, yeah? And this is the worst thing about my, and I hold badness because I'm angry with the social services for not teaching me the skills that I needed.
to be a father as well you know what i mean but just showing love showing respect showing the, the normal things you become a better person for it so i wouldn't have come out of care end up getting with some bird she's had a baby i didn't know how to be a dad you know what i mean I've, i really didn't know how to be a father responsibilities i can't even look at, I, I i don't even know how to look after myself at this state you know what i mean so then you've got to look after a little baby so then the baby ends up in care and i remember jessica my daughter yeah like she um she ended up going into care and i'm before she went to care i knew the, i knew it was going down that way her mum was having difficulties and stuff like that yeah and i remember saying to her please please don't stop being naughty please be good you need to be good because if you're not they're going to take you and they took her and it's it was just a mad time that was in 2010. so we've seen like priests uh people join the church to become priests because they know that if they get busted doing pedo stuff they ship them off to a next thing didn't they they'll, they'll get protected by the high priced lawyers yeah, and all this yeah do you think that pedos join social services to, to get access to, to, yeah, to the kids they do. Well, that are from it, families well, that's what they do didn't they if you think about it yeah like bank robbers what do they do they rob banks you know what i mean someone who robs things yeah if someone's a pedo they're going to go to the place to get what they're do you know what i'm saying so definitely you know what I mean? I was in that Dovegate um, prison and there was a dirty pedo nonce in there, yeah? Can I say his name? No, we don't want you to say any names. Yeah. Otherwise, the right. others take the video. Yeah, got fair, down, enough, yeah. Fair, fair But anyway, yeah. this geezer's a dirty, dirty boy, yeah? And he fucking, uh, he was a headmaster of a school. A headmaster of a school. Like, and it, this wasn't the first time he had done this. He got life. Like, how can he be a headmaster of a school with previous convictions for abuse? You, you know must have been thinking of caving his skull in when you saw that guy. It's there. hard. It's hard. Like when I when I went into that gaff, I remember, yeah, I, I got in there and I didn't speak. I didn't speak for a little while because one, I was around some fucking weird people and I didn't want to really interact with them. I only went there for my own, to, to benefit myself. And I don't want to go there to be around them sort of people. But it's very difficult to not fucking get these people and do bad things to them especially when they're listening to your personal stories because obviously you go to Dovegate it's in t intense therapy mm. so you've got to sit there and you've got to talk about your index offence why you went to prison and you can't chat shit because obviously it's basically like a behaviour place for you to try and slow your thinking skills down and stuff like that so you don't act like a lot of my stuff was like my crimes are already premeditated in it like I knew what I was going to do I knew I was going to get money. I knew I was going to, do you know what I mean? Like, but these pedos are different. They're different to, they're not the same as us. No. They're fucking not, man. And it's difficult to not fucking batter them. <clears throat> but to be fair, <clears throat> we used to batter them. Like in other jails, I remember when I was in scrubs, um, the cop, uh, not the cop, uh, the screw, I've ended up having, um, I've ended up having a meeting with one of the mental health doctors and I said it for banter. Like, no joke. It was just for a laugh. I said, feel like battering your govs today yeah because i was pissed off i've been in prison for a little while now and things weren't going right for me and the govs come up to me he's gone to me roberts like he goes there is some real naughty ones on this wing and he, and i was like oh, yeah and he's told he showed me i'm not going to say obviously who it was or whatever yeah, no or what wing we was on at the time but we battered him we battered him and all the govs knew about it like all the govs know about it. And when I say we smashed this fella to pieces, mate, he could not walk. We broke his fucking arm, split his head open. We bust him up and that was good. I felt good. I liked that because this, what this spray had done to that other kid was like thinking about what these people did to me. Mm. So giving it to a pedo was like, made me feel, made me feel good. Like that was a good day in prison. Yeah, and when we put it to the public about convict justice on pedos, they are like almost 100% behind it. Yeah, yeah. And do you know what the thing is there? Uh, some of these govs, they're no different to us lot. They've got family. They've got kids of their own. They've got a wife. And 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 no one no one wants their children hurt, man. And that takes the innocent out of anyone, that shit does. Man. Yeah. It, it ruined me. Like for years, for years, nightmares. For fucking 20, over 20 years, nightmares I had about what happened to me. So you started acting up then after that second um, thing, the thing in Kent, and you start smashing up the schools and getting arrested for, for assaulting a teacher. Yeah, basically, you could imagine, yeah, you've got from the age of five, from, from the age of five up until around 
10, 11, I was just chaotic. Like I would break everything. Teachers had to restrain me all the time. I was constantly being restrained by um, members of staff. The members of staff, I remember, because one day I've done something in the school and basically they've ended up restraining me in a chair a whole day long, man. So I had bruises all up my armpits, all down my arms. And this is from members of staff holding like a nine-year-old, 10-year-old boy, like pinning him to a chair all day. So when they let me go, I just went berserk and smashed every window in the school, mm. which is obviously, I was a, I was a crazy kid, man. <laughs> every window in the school? Every window in the school. It was How many a, windows did it have? At least 50 windows. Holy I literally shit. Went and 50 windows. Yeah, yeah, smashed the gaff to pieces. The whole That's front a statement, of the window. isn't it? Yeah, I was on it. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, Aggie little kid. That was just with rocks, was it? Rocks, or? yeah. Anything I could find, chairs, rocks, everything. And I, and that's how it was. I was um, I was a pain in the ass, but it's because I was angry. You can't understand that. All of this, there was a reason why this smashing up. We weren't just smashing shit up for no reason. Like you got to imagine this. Like you got this little kid. He's had nothing but bare trauma his whole life. Yeah, that's what it's been. It's been one instant after another, after another, after another. So you've got the abuse as a kid. You then you get put in that. Uh, these weird places, yeah? They're not letting you near your mum. So you're trying to run at your mum. You're getting mm. grabbed by members of staff, flung into a padded room, yeah, for little, like for, for a little man to be, well, I was, what, fucking hell, I must have been five, maybe around the five, four, five mark, being restrained by four grown-ass men mm. in a padded room with padded walls and a padded door. You know, that is not normal. You don't treat kids like that. And then when you do, they start acting up. This is what happened to me. I started acting different to all the other kids, become aggressive, become violent, become smashing shit up. And that's how it went. That's how it went. I couldn't I couldn't function like all the other kids. Even though I wanted the same as all the other kids, I just couldn't. I just couldn't because of all, all the shit that I'd already got. And I was only 10 then. And then there's the assault on a teacher. Well, that's the same teacher that assaulted me. So I assaulted her back and then I got arrested for it. And that's that's the same thing. Like in the same school, end up assaulting the teacher because obviously they're, they're pinning me down all day. I'm being held by members of staff. They're not nice in there. You know what I mean? So then I would just run off in that school as well. We'd have like the minibus. Yeah, it was called, um, can I say the name of the school? Or can't they do that? Yeah, the name of the school's fine. Yeah, it was called Donbass Learning Opportunity Centre. Yeah, for the fucking deranged kids. That's what we were, yeah, <laughs> literally, yeah. And um, we'd come off the van, but because these staff, were, they weren't particularly nice, some of these people. Some of them were all right, some of them weren't, you know, but we would just do the same thing now. I'd instigate all the kids together and we'd pull up in the van and scatter we'd all be gone again <laughs> like the van would literally pull up and then you'd get 15 kids would just disappear in different directions <laughs> so you ended up in Westminster yeah man what After well, like? basically what it was yeah I was in Kent for a little while I keep saying basically man I'm fucking doing my nothing man <laughs> um, so I'm in uh, I'm in Kent and uh, I, I've ended up moving from Kent um, one because I think I wanted to move and, I, and because of my behaviour so they've moved me from Kent back to London. That's when I went to Five Sherland Road. Now that place is opposite pedo, the pedo lot. You know what I'm talking about? You know, the freaking Dolphin Square. Mm. Yeah. So there were, that, that was that gaff. That was a horrible place, man. Mm. Ho horrible gaff. And um, I remember being there and the staff were just fucking horrible. The whole gaff was horrible. It was mad. It's like, it's hard to explain being a bit older now that place was just built on nastiness mm. like this care the care home weren't nice the kids in there weren't nice but you've got under you got to understand as well you've got like loads of different kids with all of these different shit going on in their life it's hard for them kids to come to here and then just fit in and be like you know what i mean it don't work like that so i've run away and that's when i when i got back into london that's when my real running away period started and I, and I was literally a prolific runaway from that moment on getting back to London up until I got my own flat in um in the Howe Road so you're homeless then for quite a while well yeah I was based as well, a kid in London that's got to be tough it was scary you know because I was like uh, when I was chilling with all my mates we'd be doing these things called all-nighters and we'd be staying out all night with all our buddies and all that from the edge of the road and they'd all be going home slowly they'd all disappear and all that but I never had a gaff to go to you know what I mean? Like, I couldn't sleep at my mum's because my mum didn't want me there. Like, I, I couldn't, um, 
like I couldn't stay at Martha Powers all the time because the police would be looking under his bed and searching his house for me and all that. So there's places mm. I couldn't stay anywhere. So I had to fucking stay on the streets. Being a kid, like what I did, I would just break into cars. And that's how I live my life, innit? Like I'd steal out of cars during the day, sleep in them. And that's how it was. Steal the stuff, shot it, get some food. So just get sleeping. on the back seat to sleep. Is that the best? No, no, spot? just start it up, drive it around the corner, and just sit there with the engine running until it run out of petrol. Wake up, do the same thing. Oh, I see. Yeah. And you just sleep, are you? Yeah, like sleep. Yeah, sleep. Getting whatever, right. yeah, whatever you back can. Back in the day, you used to be able to hot wire the cars. Different to yeah. what you can now. Obviously, everything's immobilized. Back then, it weren't as bad as it is now. You know. Mm. So, yeah, I should just break into them, hot wire them, sleep in the car. Wake up next morning, or when I when I wake up when I wake up and then off I go. And did you ever get caught doing that? I got caught and brought back to the police station loads of times, and then brought to the care homes. Mm. And it was just a revolving door, it's a constantness. That's how it was. We just go out, get caught. The police would bring me back to this social services would bring me back to that gaff, and um, that's another thing. The reason why I used to do that as well is because I remember going to my auntie's house years and years ago. I was younger. I've gone there, I've run away from the care home and I've gone there because it's my family, it's my aunt, it's my cousin's mum and next thing, I've, the police are at the house, you know, so the police are taking me back to the children's home and it's like, you know, when I look back at it, it's like you get put in care, you've got these old Bill looking for you all the time, you've got, you're going into this care home, you're getting abused there mentally, a lot of mental abuse, you've got physical abuse as well, it's like the sexual abuse does happen in them places. And and then they come out and then and then it's just it's just madness and then just end up in jail like it, it's just a constant revolving door, you know. So you ended up in prison at sixteen. What was that for? Uh, first time I went to prison, I uh, went to jail for uh, getting a police chase. Um, police chase. Yeah, in a car. Yeah. Um, obviously, when I was younger, I used to chill um, with this girl, a good friend of mine, Sam, and um, like I'd. In, in the Edgware Road, we had a lot of little buddies around there, innit? And I, I had my selected friends that I got on with, and I'd stay with Sam. And then, anyway, Sam ended up moving out of London up towards, like, um, I think it was Ilford direction. So I thought, yeah, I'd nick a car and drive to Ilford. So I nicked the car, because that's what I did as a kid, you know, I was a little car thief, little pain in the ass. And um, I've nicked the motor, ended up getting a police chase. So I've ended up holding a police chase all the way around London, Marlborough, Piccadilly, Park Lane. Oxford Street, I've ended up hitting the police car outside Paddington Police Station, carried on driving, end up getting put, end up going up Park Lane the wrong way, they stung my tyres out, end up in prison. When you're in a police chase, is it exciting for you at that age? Brilliant, yes, yeah, like, I thought it was excellent, I did, I did, did honestly, honestly, it's that's like how the video game was, yeah, it's exactly what it was like, but yeah. as you're a kid, it's not, you're, you're, you're kind of fucking stupid, isn't it? That's what kids are fucking dumb at their age. And you know, I was anyway. And I, th I thought it was great fun. I had absolutely no disregard for anyone else on the road. I couldn't care less if I'd scratched up their cars. But it was all a part of the fun, getting chased. But this is the thing. It's been like this all my life. It was like that all my life. I was getting chased from the police when I was running away from care homes as a kid. I was getting chased by police when I was running away from my mum. You know, I was getting ch I was getting chased by police all the time. So being 16 years old, getting chased by the police was nothing. It was nothing out of the ordinary. It was just a common thing. You know what I mean? And we do it and get away from them all the time. So going into prison at 16, is that a young offenders prison? Yeah, I went to Felton. Yeah, I was Felton. in Felton, and it was sad, you know, because uh, even to this day, um, like I was talking to my missus last night. It made me real sad. Um, when I went to um, when I went to Felton, I met a kid. And it's really sad, man. His name was Kevin. I'm not going to say a second name because obviously, but I was in boarding school with this kid. And it just shows you the mentality that the social services put. I'm not saying the social services are to blame for Kevin's, uh, for, for what happened to Kevin, but Kevin was the youngest person to hang himself in Felton. Oh, dear. You know what I mean? And he was my mate and he was my power, you know, and I was in care with him as a kid. Me and him was in care together and he had his own problems or not, not. So I've gone to Felton and ended up killing himself. You know, which is in itself is not a nice. So yeah, it was just it was weird. I've gone to Feltham, done some time in them Feltham, and come out. Um, I literally come out of Feltham, got into crime straight away. Uh, got nicked for another stealing of cars. Again, it was always bloody cars with me. Uh, got nicked for nicking another car, and they put me in court. 
and at the time I was with my ex-partner and uh, I was in court with my mate Chris he was my co-defendant so we're in court and I'm laughing because I'm a big kid like this I'm like laughing at this justice system I'm like fuck off I don't care what you gotta say give some water that's the attitude I had I was a proper little div in it so then um the judges, obviously, the three magistrates are thinking that he's a right cocky little shit, this one here, you know, talking that, like, like, because I'm so like blase about their fucking justice system. Anyway, I've, uh, they've turned around and they're like, yeah, right, remind him, as in to me, remind him in local, uh, remind me into custody and remind my co defendant into local authority. And I've, and I said this to my, to my girlfriend at the time, if they try to send me to jail, watch what happens. And I meant that. So they tried to put me in jail and I've ended up, uh, I've ended up jumping up, pick the chair up, run at the jailer, smash the chair off the, the, the chair off the jailer's head. He's gone down, haven't knocked him out completely. So he's still sort of with it. Bear in mind, I'm only 16 years old at this age. So I've bust his head with a chair. I've undone the two door locks, got the door open. And as I was getting out the door, they've all come, security's come, they've got me, pulled me back into the fucking courtroom. And I've just seen the guy's arm. So I've just, I, I was a wild little kid, innit? And I, I have no explanation why I did it, but I just bit into this guy. And I, it was like a fucking dog, man. I've pulled my mouth away. I've had his T-shirt in my mouth. But I was, I was crazy, innit? You got to understand this kid was suffering from some sort of psychosis or some sort of madness was going on in his head because he weren't functioning right, you know? And then, um, yeah, I've ended up going, trying to escape from the courtroom, basically. Got... I was only in there for fucking stealing a car. This is what pissed, this is what, I think the stupidness of it all, because, you know, with a click of a finger, one minute you're acting normal, the next minute, all hell's broke loose. You've got guards on their floor with their head busted open, stitches needed, blood everywhere. Then the next thing he's holding his arm, then you've got your arms at your back, you're getting thrown down the stairs into the cells. Then my solicitor's come up to me and she's like, why the fuck did you just do that? You just, you, you just got yourself years, mate. I was like, what? Being 16, I was I didn't realise doing all of that was have been as bad as it as it sounded, you know. So I've ended up I was only in court for uh, I think it was TDA. So they've ended up nicking me for two counts of section eighteen. Yeah. One for smashing a chair over the jailer's head and giving him twelve stitches in his head. The second one a bit and he got uh, got done for ABH on him and then attempted escape from lawful custody, which ended up getting ten months, ten months, ten months for all three of them. But they dropped the section 18 down to a section 20 and dropped the other section 18 down to, I think it was ABH because it was only a bite. So I was like, but for all of that for nothing, you know, all of that mad behavior, the bite in the smashing of chairs, trying to escape from court. And I would have only got two, maybe a month. But it just shows the mentality of it. You know, the kid is just not right. And in the prison hierarchy at that young age then, you know a lot of people and you fit in, you don't have problems. Uh, to be fair, when it, you see Feltham as a whole, it, all the kids are on mad shit in there. Like when I was in there, I didn't really get into too much trouble because I was violent. You know what I mean? I was a violent kid and no one really, really bothered me. I remember having a couple of fights in there, but nothing, nothing, nothing like dramatic, say. Nothing that, that, can, that, that scarred my memories, you know what I mean? But yeah. it was later on in jail when I had the bigger fights. That was more scarring, to be fair. So then you have your first daughter, and you're only 17, 18 around there. Yeah, Jessica. Um, basically, what it was, it was just I've gone, I've ended up, uh, I'm one of, the, one of the boys, and I go out, commit crime, fucking, met Jess's mum, uh, and it was just one of them things, you know. She's, she's become pregnant. I've, I've gone to prison. I've come out of jail. I've tried to be a dad. I've tried to be a father, like, as in, tried to be a dad in it you know but i didn't have the skills i didn't have the know-how i didn't have the i just didn't know what to do you mm -hmm. know what i mean and even though i had my mother in the background and it's it's different when you've got to do it yourself in it and I, I just didn't have what it took i know it sounds like a cop out but it's not it's actually the fucking truth you know i just didn't know how to be a dad i tried financially i was good i was there with the money and made sure she had bits that she needed but i wasn't there good as a dad you know, and that, and I put that down to partly myself, but social services have a card in there, you know what I mean? Because they were the ones that brought me up. 
they were the ones that brought me up from the age of fucking six up until I was 16, you know, and giving someone 50 quid a week and doing nothing with them don't help them. You know, there's no education there. And it's still like it to the day. Like my daughter now, Jessica, she went into care and there was times in her life that she, she had things, but she's done well. She's come out of it. She had a little baby, which makes me a granddad. Yeah. And, um, She's doing brilliant. She's got her own place now. My little granddaughter is absolutely amazing. You know what I mean? And it's like, but what I'm saying is, by the system, is a is is it's a revolving door. You know what I mean? But you see what I mean with my with me, for instance. I end up going into care. All this fucking shit happened. I got abused loads. The care homes was a fucking nonsense. Bare nonsense in there. F fucked up place, man. And then you end up coming out of care. You end up in prison. You end up having kids. So then you've got another kid that's now in the system, as in the care system, yeah? You've got a parent who's in the fucking jail system and it just keeps going, you know what I mean? And, and that is what I mean by social services. Of, they're not all bad, but 90% of them are, mate. And, and I mean that. Like they, I have no good positive things about the SS. And that's what I call them, the fucking SS. <laughs> so you then step up to armed robberies on banks as a young person. Well, no, what it was, yeah, you got to imagine there was a lead up to that. It wasn't all straight. It wasn't just one day, let's rob banks. It, it didn't go like that. For years and years and years, where I'd been like on and off the streets, out of care homes, hiding and all that. I've had to, I've had to pay for food. You know what I mean? I've had to live, you know what I mean? So I've started thieving, obviously as a, as a young age, stealing, whatever, you know what I mean? And then obviously it builds up, it builds up to like your criminal, my criminal life started when I was 13 and it just went onwards from there. And we graduated, you get bigger and bigger and bigger up in the, in the criminal world. And then it just makes sense to do the things that are right and the banks and it made sense. It just made sense to me. I was thinking, well, I'm better than them. And this is what I mean by it became a game because in my eyes, I was better than them. You know, the first time when we started doing all of that shit and then we got nicked, it was mad. It was mad. It was mad easy. How did you just suddenly do one of them? Like the bigger players recruit you and test you? Nah, nah, they never had no bigger players, man. It was just a step up in, in money. And that's how it was. It basically went from being a fucking little joyrider to becoming a, a better criminal. You know, you upscale the market, you, you you know, like in a job, you start off as a cleaner and then you step up, you become a, you know what I mean? And this criminal world is exactly the same as that. It's no different. Like you start off at the bottom and then you go to jail and you meet other people and you're like, right, you hear about stories and how did they do this and how did they do that? And it's like, well, I've heard all of these things. Now I'm going to do it. You know what I mean? And that's how it is. You You get... And you see things on TV, you see all the gangsters living good and you're like, oh, fuck no, I can't afford a BMW. I want a, I want a Bentley or I want a nice watch. I, I want a, a pair of trainers that cost 300 quid, you know what I mean? But I can't do that if I'm working in McDonald's, you know what I mean? So people are like, well, in my case, I never worked in McDonald's, but I was always being involved in crime and stuff like that. So it just made sense to just bigger reward, more risk. Obviously, you're going to go jail. Um, but it just made sense and it's just a mindset having what, what was the first one like the first time i ever done it i threw up i got sick when i got back to my my pal's house and we counted the money out i got sick take us through the robbery uh basically it was just the same thing as any other robbery you know you go in there you, the geese is bringing in the cash so when you say you go in there then you, you scouted this location of out course, and found, yeah. Found, okay. yeah yeah that would have been done way in advance you know, and you know when it's going to turn up and then you just go in and like the, the movies make it look really brilliant. Yeah. They make it like, it's like, you know, the film Heat, you've seen the film yeah, Heat where everyone's like, yeah, yeah. shoot outs, bang, bang. It's, it's nothing like that. It's so much, it was so much easier than that because we'd have the vehicle, we'd go there, we're strong guys. We're pretty sure of our fight, our size. We know that we can fucking fight. We know that we can deal with these people. And it's just, we're taking what's, and that's ours. And you're going with weapons and everything else. Well, the ones that I got convicted of um, in the earlier days, there was no weapons in them. The ones later on I got convicted of, there was a weapon involved in that. So if there's no weapon then, how do you control the crowd? Aggression. 
Just yelling at them. Aggression, yeah. Aggression. If someone comes near, then you'd, you'd move to them. Wouldn't you? if, if you're doing something, like my thought plan is this, my pattern is this, isn't it? Obviously, I don't commit robberies no more. I would never commit a crime ever again. And I'm not telling anyone to go out and do this because it's, it would just end bad for you. But how we used, how I used to do it specifically would just be, you get your vehicle, you plate up your vehicle, either clone the plates or whatever. You'd have your gaff where you know you're going to go and then you'd just be suited, booted and you'd go in and do what you've got to do. Now, if someone, a hero, for instance, tries to intervene then and and it depends on what role you're playing within that team at that time if someone's trying to do something to your mate for instance you need to stop them because if he hurts you that means your team ain't at their full capacity then do you know what i'm saying so they can't do what they need to do do you know what i mean um so it would just be just be as angry as possible and that's actually it and it works just being pure aggressive works but on the ones back in the day was with the burkers and all that it was so just run us through that then you, you decided to do a robbery wearing a burka yeah 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 i had to, i'll be honest with you we wanted to hit the papers in it that's how we had it yeah because we were young we were young and it, we were like yeah go get money let's make it would be fun we'll just go and hit a bank and there's all this glamorous stuff about robbing banks you know when you're a kid and you're a criminal it's like robbing a bank is the best thing in it that's what <laughs> you think you know what I mean? And that's what we thought. We thought, yep, yeah, let's do it like this. If we do it like this, it's common sense. Your head to toe, completely covered. You can't be seen. That like Your face is covered. Your hands are covered. There's no way they'll be able to see who you are. So it just made sense to use that disguise. It's different if you have to put makeup on because that's all long taken off. With, uh, with a burqa, it's just straight pull off the hat, pull off the, the, the jacket, the, the, the dress bit, and you're in completely civilian clothing. They've, you could be anybody. So in our in our mindset, that was the best way to go forward because it's just simple. You know, it's an easier way to do it. It's it's gonna be in the papers, yeah, which was the mindset that like we wanna be on telly, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> which is it's crazy, right? Honestly, when I sit back and I think about it now, it was like it just shows you the head, you know, where your head was at back then. I, yeah. I know that was like sixteen years ago now. Sixteen years actually. 15 years ago long time you know so the mindset's changed now obviously we don't want to be in the papers for <laughs> things like that you know so yeah but it was easy you know it really was we've gone in there we've basically gone and um pulled up in a gone to i'll tell you exactly how it happened we've gone to we've gone to regent's park mosque and i've um i've gone in there and i bought the dress and i'm in there and we're trying the dresses on yeah in there and the ladies are laughing at us yeah, that this is exactly exactly how it happened, <laughs> and the ladies are all cracking up at us, like, and we're thinking like we thought it was funny, in it. Yeah, we didn't realize in any way, shape, or form that that was maybe disrespectful to a religion or anything like that, because we're not thinking like that. You've got to think about we're only twenty years old, we're young, we're pretty immature. You know, we're not thinking about consequences. Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing a bank. You know, we wouldn't even be in that building if we thought about consequences. You know what I mean? So. Our mindset is let's just get our dresses, let's go. So we then we, we put the dresses on and then um, we leave. We paid for them. I paid £80 for my dress. I never once stole it. And I mean this, I never nicked nothing out of there. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, but um, paid for the dress, paid £80 for it. And as I'm walking out the, out the main, have you seen Regent's Park Mosque? You've got the big stone floor and then you've got the gates. Well, I'm walking out the gates and... Um, Obviously, my Cody, he's, he's a lot bigger than me. He's like six foot something. I'm only five foot nine, nine, five nine, something like that. I'm a bit shorter than him, but he's a bit bigger. So the security guard's obviously gone for the small one, mm. meaning me. So me being smaller, the geezer's come after me. So he's come after me, he's grabbed me. And obviously, I've just f fucking fucked him down on the floor. Get off me. You know what I mean? So then I'm running. But then you've got to think about it. Yeah, they've seen like um, there was a big crowd of people outside this fucking mosque and I'm not kidding about 300 of them started chasing me so I've run so I'm running this is fucking when I look when I think back it's fucking uh, it's hilarious what's it like running in a burka hard work mate because this is the joke yeah? I've got my keys in my pocket and I'm trying to lift the dress up and trying to get my hands to get my oh. key because my car's parked across the road I'm being chased by about at least 150 guys <laughs> yeah and they want to kill me innit and I think about it I've just come running out of the mosque 
I've got security guard going, da, 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 come back. <laughs> <laughs> You've got me running in a burqa. You've got my other mate running that way. So they're thinking, I don't know what they're thinking, but I know I'm thinking I need to get out of here because I'm going to get killed. You know what I mean? So I get in a car and I'm all shaking. Obviously, I've got about 150 people chasing me. So I'm putting my key in the ignition, managed to get the car started. As I'm wheel spinning away, you've got people ripping mirrors off, ripping Ooh. windscreen wipers off. So that's, yeah, so that's happened. And then we've uh, ended up meeting up, man. And uh, I've ended up meeting up with in the green. So then we've gone off to uh, we've gone off to Kilburn, and we're just driving down the road. We've seen it pull up. And we've just gone in, and obviously the, the thing that made me laugh about it, because obviously we weren't violent. We weren't using violence. It was just more a little shove, you know. what I mean, there was no violent at this stage. It was it's when we got a bit older. But I'll explain that to you. So anyway, we were in the bank in Kilburn, and uh, I remember um, we're in the queue. And the guy's doing his runs, he's back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And we don't want to get him too early because if we get him too early, um, I want to be right beside where he puts the money in the chute before we grab it, yeah? So we're in the chute, we're in the queue. Next thing, there was, I remember there was a couple of Muslim ladies in front of us. And I'll tell you what they said in the paperwork afterwards. And I find it, I find it hilarious what they said though, yeah? Um, so we've done... We've grabbed the money. Basically, the guy's come in. He's opened the box. He's he's crouching down, and I've just grabbed him, flung him across the bank. My mates grabbed the money, and off we've gone. Jumped in the car, got away. Went down the road, got away, and then we got done for another one, pretty similar to that. In fact, very similar to that. Um, and we end up basically getting concurrent sentences for them. But the only thing is for them is. What they've done is they said, if you give us one more, plead guilty to one more, tell us another one, we'll drop it from conspiracy to rob, because that's what it was originally, robbery and conspiracy to rob, down to theft, which was obviously a fucking deal breaker. Like, obviously, you're, you're going you're gonna to take that. So we were like, yep, straight away, we plead guilty to theft. And we ended up getting concurrent sentences for them, which I thought was lenient, which was lucky. The judge weren't happy. I remember my QC, James Scobie, saying to me, um, he said to me, uh, because I could see the CPS and the probation. Uh, sorry, not CPS. Yeah, it was CPS and the judge. The judge was like, no, these are not thefts. Like, these are robberies. They've dressed up. They've gone into a mosque. They've stolen his clothes. Then they've gone to a bank and committed a bank robbery. He was pissed. You could see he was pissed. And this was in Kingston Crown Court. At Barnes, they always take you there, flying squad. So then um, we end up getting our sentences. And then I come out. I come out after, well... I think, when did I get nicked? I got nicked in 2006. I got out just at the end of 2008 for that. How much money did you get on those robberies? 75 grand. Did you blow all that? Yeah. Yeah, you do, innit? You know, when you're young, Yeah. Like it's all amusing. You think you can get more of it, you know what I mean? And what, that's are you, the what are you blowing it on? You blow it on everything. Brasses, fucking pubs, sniff, drink, clubbing, clothes, fucking cars, motorbikes. It goes on everything, doesn't it? So you're doing a lot of coke. I, I used to like the Charlie, yeah, back yeah, in the day. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah, yeah, too much. I think all of us did, to be fair, because that's what happens when you're in that lifestyle, isn't it? It all comes comes part and part, drink, clubbing, sniff. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. It's all, it's all comes hand in hand, doesn't it? You know? People of the night. Yeah, that's it, party time, isn't it? I used to like the bumbles, though. That was my thing. <laughs> Things that you used to like getting rid of. <laughs> <laughs> the old so, party pills, isn't it? So what happens next? Well, after that, end up going to prison, um, done a big stint in there. Well, I wouldn't say it was a big stint. 18 months ain't really that long. So I do 18 months in jail. Um, I basically get nicked. I get my sentence, sorry. I get my three years. I get into court, get my sentence. I was happy as Larry with that. I was thinking only three years, shit, shower and shave. That was the mindset, yeah? So then go to court, get my sentence, go to prison. Two days later, a slip comes under the door. Now I'm thinking, right, oh, what the heck's this like? So the slips come under the door. The police, then I go to reception in Wandsworth. The police are there saying, um, do you want to come out with us now? If you don't come out with us now, we'll just wait until you end your, your sentence and then we'll nick you then. But you're getting nicked regardless. So I was like, come on then, we'll go out, we'll get it done, sorted. So I walk, I walk out, get into the car. As soon as we w go through the gates, the cop has turned around to me and I, I, laugh, I laugh about it because it was... He was, he was definitely, uh, 
he's taking a piss is what he was because he said the flying he said mr roberts the flying squad are not happy with you and then he said by the way i'm arresting you for robbery times too which is like fucking oh come on mate you're nicking me for another two robberies i've just got birded off for the fucking free that you've just done me for i admit it to shit as well you know what i mean so be happy with that you know what i mean i've had a life of shit i'm not saying that justifies anything like just because i had a hard life doesn't mean that gives me justification to go and fucking hurt other people but it's just the way it was you know what i mean so anyway i, I go through that sentence end up in traveling all over the place again and that one i end up in scrubs fucking wandsworth camp hill at the time up by the isle of wight back to london had my trial got found not guilty um for uh the two robberies and i'd explain and i and explain that how how that happened as well so basically you've got me being in i've been in jail for 18 months now i'm just coming home i'm excited you know i'm excited and this is what i mean by the police have always put things in the in way to fuck your life up yeah and me in particular like me in particular because i've just done my sentence man i'm going home my dues are paid now you know what i mean no one was hurt there wasn't like people got barged over there, like barged out of the way it's not exactly they've been kicked punched assaulted bad it's just been a little barge so then we've um so they should be leaving me alone a little bit i'm doing my time i'm, I'm, I'm due to be released so anyway they put me on trial the victim who now lives in spain because he's so terrified of what happened to him and so traumatized which sounds so bad but i'll explain it to you now in a second He's now in Spain. The copper is retired now, lives in over in Northern Ireland or somewhere in Ireland. So it's a big case. They've got to bring this, the, the victim back over. They've got to bring the copper back over. So the copper there, and they've, they're all doing their statement. And the victim saying that he picked me out, he did, he picked me out of an ID parade 15 months after he actually got robbed. So imagine you walk out the front of this gaff here, yeah? You've got a camera at the top of, the, at the top of your wall there. You walk out the building, next thing, you get chinned, yeah? So someone's belted you right in the mouth, yeah? You've gone back, your glasses have come off uh, and someone's clamp holded you straight away. So your head is there, you're, you're getting choked out, yeah? And then they put you on your face. Now that happened in less than five seconds. That whole situation happened for the victim, which is terrible, happened in five seconds. So we're, we're saying now, how is it possible that you can have all of this shit happen to you in a, such a short space of time and still remember this guy, let alone it's black out, it's dark, you got glasses. How are you seeing and recognizing this man 17 months after? Well, it's quite simple. The coppers told him that's the guy you need to pick out on the ID parade. It just makes sense, yeah? And my solicitor's told me, my solicitor's my mate, so he tells me. So he's told me that anyway. So we have the full trial. And I'm, I'm on this trial in Harrow Crown Court. And uh, you've got all the victim is giving all his evidence and everything. And then what made me bust the case is what I just said to you. Mr. James Scobie has then turned around and said, is it possible that you may be mistaken? And the geezer turned around and was like, no, I'm positive, I'm positive, I'm positive. And then James Scobie has then twisted it in another way, answered exactly the same question, just in a different way. Being dark, all these, all these things. Are you sure? And he was like, you had to think about it. So the case, you're not 100% sure that this is the man that's assaulted you, committed this robbery, took your 14,000 pound watch and your 50 grand Jeep. You're not sure. So they had to find me not guilty. The judge ordered the case to be dismissed there. And then I got found not guilty for that. And I was as happy as Larry. I got out a month later. Ooh, that was close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it goes on, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. But things get even crazier. Yeah. Please chase a couple yeah, of weeks later. Yeah, yeah man. Um, basically, it was the same shit again. <laughs> Come out of jail. I lasted seven weeks. Back at it. Back at crime. Being criminal again. Um, I've, I've ended up being wanted. I've got the police wanted me now because I'm not sticking to my license agreements. And my Basically, my license. You know what license is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So I'm not sticking to my license. So I'm wanted. Want to run. Um, I've ended up getting in a police chase um obviously had a fast car it was a pretty decent little motor actually to be fair but i've ended up having a mad police chase with the old bill i've only been out a little while i've had that seven weeks had a mental police chase helicopters all around london i've ended up having coming down to i think it was a chiswick roundabout hit the chiswick roundabout about 80 mile an hour cars flipped over smashed pieces 
I've woke up in the car with a policeman holding my head, pinching my ear. Um, and I was obviously, I realized then I've been in a car crash, helicopter come. I mean, fucking got cut out of the car, survived luckily. And then same thing, back to prison again. Was in jail for a couple of years at time, a year and a bit after that as well. So it's just like the same thing, you know, the same revolving door. Come out of jail, back into crime, back into prison. Well, you got a big, bigger and bigger sentences. Yeah, they all build. They they got bigger and bigger and bigger. Every every time I committed another offence, my sentences just got bigger, got bigger, got bigger. But so did the, um, so did my uh, my thought of greatness, shall I say? Me thinking I was better than them, you know. And I did think I was better than them. I did. A hundred percent. I thought when I when I got into my into my over twenties, um, it became it became like a like it was a game. And the absolute game. It's like when we was doing the, when we was doing, then we got Nick for the hotel, and and my victim, um, the one that changed everything. It was mad because I knew the police were watching me, and I knew they were watching me, and I would follow them. Like I remember, we'd take the piss out of them that they're following us, and we'd follow them. And on this one particular time, we were gonna go out and commit crime that day, but they showed their hand. They pulled up in a black cab jumped out of the cab, realised that he didn't have his his uh, his license around his neck because black cabbies got to wear licences in London, don't they? So I realised he didn't have his licence around his neck and me and my co-defendant straight away, that's Flying Squad. And you know who Flying Squad are, you know what I mean? Um, so then we've drove off. Today's abandoned. We're not going to carry on. That was the attitude. So we've drove off, bored. They've started following us. So we've done a couple U-turns and started following the Flying Squad. <laughs> Now we're having banter. We think it's hilarious now, yeah, because we're like we're following the flying squad, thinking the flying squad they're supposed to be the boys, aren't they? They are the boys, aren't they? I'm not gonna lie, they're fucking when they get you, they're the lads. But yeah, on this particular day, we're following. So we pulled up beside them, and I'm laughing at the cop. I'm like, what kind of what kind of obo is this, man? Like your cover's blown and all that shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> not realizing that I'm should have really just kept my mouth shut, noticed that they were there, and just carried on my day as normal. Um, but I showed them that I, I spotted them and then they they disappeared. I didn't see them after that, but they were there. <laughs> nevertheless, <laughs> they were there. They were there the whole way. And then obviously after that, we just carried, cracked on. We cracked on with uh, with crime and then, uh, then they got us. <sighs> so there's an attempted murder on police in 2016. Yes, that was... Um, see, that all happened... From um from jealous people, I tell you exactly how this happened. What it was um after after my after my victim, I come out of jail with a different mentality. I wanted to change. I wanted to be, I wanted to be a family man. I wanted to settle down. I wanted to be a good parent, and I wanted to try and um, I wanted to try and be a better guy in it. I didn't want to hurt people no more. After hearing my victim's impact statement, that changed my whole mindset. How crime i looked at it and viewed it <clears throat> so i've come out of prison i've gone to uh met my missus and things are brilliant like i'm working i'm living in milton kings i wanted to be the adult with it because i was with my ex for 10 years i said look i'm coming out of jail there's no point in me being under your feet there's no point in me being in london around you because one it's going to hurt you when you see me with someone else and it's going to hurt me when i see you with someone else so let's just cut that shit out of the question and I'll move to I'll move to Milton Kings. So I did. I went to Milton Kings and I met my partner, but my partner's from the same area as my ex-partner. Mm. So <clears throat> she found out, didn't like it, Caught, took an injunction out on me, um, said, said bare lies about me, said that I was uh, stalking her and stuff like that. But because I went to jail for violent robberies, and I was classed as a mapper, mapper two. I think it was tier two, mapper two, tier one or tier two, something like that. Um, but I was definitely a mapper and I was in a, in, a, in, a, in a mapper hostel. So they put me in the hostel and I had to sign on at three o'clock every day. That was to stop me from venturing out to go and commit other crimes, you know what I mean? So you can't get too far out of, away from anywhere. So you have to sign on, which saved me in one sense because she's making these allegations that I'm stalking her in Harrow, in London. And I'm not, I'm living in Milton King. So when I did get questioned and um, the court papers were all put through for the, 
for the uh what's it called an injunction i was like how is this possible like how are you how are you even one how are you i'm, I'm happy that this injunction is in place yeah because that limits her contact with me which is good i'm happy with that i don't have to talk to her she can't talk to me great that, that that's what works for everybody but it don't work for the kids you know what i mean yeah it's not good for the kids um but she's gone on scornful said that i've started stalking her this that and the other Please have questioned me. They've, and I've produced a paper. I've produced, I think it was like 60 signatures every day, signing on three o'clock every single day, every single day. I could, there's no way I can get from Milton Kings to fucking Harrow in half an hour. I'd need a helicopter or a jet plane or something. I'm not doing it in no car, innit? So, um, yeah, the, that's happened. But then what's happened is she started to escalate it. She started chatting shit with her mates. And I'm a man, innit? I'm a violent man when I want to be. And I can be violent. I choose, I just choose not to be no more because don't want to be like that yeah but on this particular time we've gone to drop the kids off at school and uh i've come out i've got the kids from school and they're stressed they're traumatized like my birds well my ex birds freaking mates kids are now starting chatting shit to my missus kids yeah so i'm like i'm not having the kids start being horrible to kids this is not a kid thing this is between the fucking adults we're the grown-ups here don't have nothing to do with the children so I've ended up, um, I've ended up trying to get out of the car. I've, I've got out of the car, spoke to the, one of the parents and I'm trying to be as assertive as possible and nice here, yeah, but my blood is boiling right now and I feel like I'm mad, yeah? So she's, uh, she's ended up saying, shut up, Anthony, what you think you're fucking big bad, Anthony? Because where I'm from, I've got, a, people know me. Like I have got a bit of a reputation where I'm from, you know? And um, I've ended up walking away because it was the right thing to do. But first, before I walked away, I told her, shut her mouth. I said, you better fucking wind your neck in or I'll smash your geezer up, yeah? Because I'm not going to start hitting a woman because that's just not what you do, yeah? So um, basically, I've ended up fucking leaving the situation, walked away, got in the car, gone home. Now, the thing is, I think a lot, Sean. I'm an obsessive thinker, innit? So um, that's happened on Friday. So I'm from Friday to Monday now, I'm sitting, I'm thinking, right, right, right. I need to fucking make sure I sort this guy out. Yeah. Now, in my walk of life, yeah, if someone is a threat to me, I need to deal with that threat as quickly as possible because if I don't, it's it's going to cause problems for me. So, in my eyes, if this geezer turns up on Monday and he's in any way, shape, or form aggressive, he's fucking dying. Yeah, I'm going to kill him, and that's what's in my head, isn't it? I'm not feeling like that now, but in my head at that time. This guy comes to, if he comes to here and brings his shit to me, the only thing I can do is fucking murder him, innit? Yeah. That's the mindset. Different now, obviously. So, um, yeah, basically, I've gone into the school run and thankfully my missus was driving the car, yeah? Because he's walked out in front of the car with his hands down his trousers. This is what I mean by he's a thick, thick idiot. Yeah. He didn't think that day because he's lucky I weren't driving. Because if I was driving that car at that precise moment, he would not be breathing now. And I'd be doing 25 years mm. for it. And I, I would have only done that because he had his hand down his trousers like he's got a weapon, mm. you know. Plus, I didn't want to do anything anyway because I had kids in the car. So we dropped, dropped, him, dropped the kids off at school quickly. Then I get in the driver's seat and I'm on the way back now. And this time he's on the pavement. So I tried to run him over on the pavement. Mm. Um, and my missus managed to pull up the handbrake thank God, because I was going about to kill this dude, innit, yeah? Mm. So I skidded up the car, I've jumped out the car now, and previous, about an hour before we done the school run, I was weighing up what weapon to use on this prayer. If he turned up, either a kitchen knife, which he's definitely dead, or a hammer. So I thought, well, let's just put the knives away today, innit? There's no need to have a knife there, because if it, he's going to die, it's just that's, you're going to get 20 years, yeah? So he put the knife down, I brought the hammer with me put the hammers in the back of the car, ready to go to work. Even though I weren't going to work that day, they were there anyway. So I've jumped out the motor and I've just gone mad. And I went for him with a hammer, tried to fucking do him. Now, this is where it gets all, it's very complicated, you know, because he's done, um, as I'm attacking this guy with a hammer, his missus on the phone to the police. We've all ended up being arrested. Sorry, I've ended up being arrested anyway, yeah? So I've tried to do him with a hammer and everything. Thankfully, I didn't do him too much damage, you know what I mean? Didn't do him... In my eyes, didn't do him enough damage, but that's my feelings back then, you know what I mean? Um, so then I end up getting arrested and it's like, 
it's like imagine this Sean I, I hit you with a hammer yeah right and you try and write an affidavit against me saying that your name's Peter Bond or fucking James Bond will say yeah your name's Sean so that statement in a signed name by some guy called Peter Bond yeah it's a made up name by the way um, it's just not standing in court yeah so my solicitor's there I'm in an interview and I'm saying to my brief, I'm saying, this ain't the guy, this, this, this is not the guy's name, this ain't the guy's name. And uh, he says to me, he goes to me, um, Do you want to turn the heater off, James? Yeah, it's getting a bit it's warmer in there now. It got it? really hot all of a sudden, yeah. Yeah, so Thanks. what happened was, what happened was, uh, I've ended up, uh, I've ended up uh, getting, uh, getting arrested, question four, what was it again? It was a question for fray, assault, weapon, carrying weapons and stuff like that. But because I'm on license now, I've got a long license. And this is what I mean by these people interfering. Yeah, I had a long license then. So I had equivalent of another seven year sentence. So three and a half year license is half of a, is basically half of a seven year sentence. Now I'd already been out six months. My 12 year sentence got reduced to eight on the guilty plea. So I'd already served four and a bit years inside because I had extra days for being naughty and stuff like that. So I'm now in, um, I'm now, I've got like three and a half years left, which is a fucking long time in prison, yeah, for people doing all this shit just because they don't like me, you know, and, it, and, and because of a woman. So me being me, I get, I always go over the top. I don't ever go, it's always too much with me. I always, I always go worse than what it should be. So I've then gone on a run. I've got nothing to lose now. Bear in mind, I've got my daughter's going to be born in the next month to two months. I've just been arrested for assaulting this guy with a hammer. My solicitor is telling me about I've, this guy's fucking fake name and all that. So then I've I've got no I've got nowhere to fight here. I can't fight now. Yeah. So prior to that, sorry, let me because I'm skipping ahead a bit much. Before me getting nicked for that. The, the ex missus is is causing loads of shit, she's making loads of allegations, and um, the police end up coming to my house, and I've ended up having a mad siege with the police. Yeah, this is a proper standoff with the old bill. Yeah, so I'm there. I've woke up. The police are there, banging down my door, and I've woke up, and I'm like, "What do you want?" Like I'm not at it no more. So I've got no. T I'm not worried about the police. I've got no attitude to be afraid of them because I'm not doing no crime. So the feds have come. They're banging down my door next minute. They're trying to arrest me for calling fucking slag. Sorry, you're going to have to delete that or whatever. But I've apparently called her a slag, yeah? This is how pathetic it's got, yeah? So you've got my three-year license, three and a half years license left, and I'm being nicked for calling people a fucking slag, which I never did. I never done that. It was just a jealous ex causing trouble for me. But me being with my past histories and my crime like all the crime shits that I've done and my record, then no one believed me. No one believed anything I had to say. So the feds have busting down my door. Next thing, I've, I've fucking, I knew what time it was. I knew I was getting arrested. So I've just flipped out. Now I've flipped out. I've run into the kitchen and I've shouted out weapons, yeah? Right? Thinking that they would fuck off out the house, but they didn't. They've carried on coming. So next thing is they wouldn't, obviously I've picked up knives, yeah? And I'm trying to now come out, exit my kitchen, there's police out in the house, in the hallway. It's so the next thing they're like, he's got weapons, screaming at the top of their voice. Next thing, a whole fucking unit's turned up, the taser team, I call them. <sighs> fucking, um, so I've run into my garden. I've got no fucking, I've got no escape route. I've done nothing wrong. <sighs> I mean, I've literally woke up that, my, that morning to my door being caved in by the police. So I've run into the garden. I've got a brick, the dog. I've got a brick and a dog with me. That's my that's my um, my defense right now is a brick and a dog, yeah, because I've got fucking two geezers with pointing tasers over there and there. I've got another two at the end of my garden. So I'm thinking I've not done nothing. And obviously I'll get my boys quad bikes and stuff like that because they love all that stuff, little motorbikes and stuff. Got my little quad and all that. So I seen the petrol there. I thought, there's no way you're going to shoot me if I've covered myself in this petrol, yeah. So I've covered myself in petrol, poured it over my chest. Because that was the only thing I could think of. <gasps> so I poured the petrol on my chest and I was like, well, you definitely ain't going to fucking shoot me now, are you? Because they were about to tase me. Yeah. And I'd done absolutely nothing. I literally didn't, I didn't do anything, Sean. I had absolutely zero violent. I was zero everything. And I was in the process of really trying to change my life. I started working. 
which is a big big thing for me. Obviously, I've come out of jail, been in jail for a long time. I've never had anything stable ever. You know, for fucking 20 years, it's been up, down, up, down, institutions. I was in institutions from a young kid. So then I'll get my missus. People are fucking trying to destroy this for me. And these are enemies now of mine, you know what I'm saying? So like, in my eyes, you doing all of this to me, for what? what? Why are you doing this to me? Have I ever done any? I don't even know these people. Like I know their names, but I don't know them. I've never associated. I've never spoke to these people. So them trying to do all of this has just sent my life completely madness. So now I'm fully wanted. You know what I mean? So I've I've, I've been arrested for, I've had a siege in my house. Like a, I think it was like a couple of hours siege. Loads of armed police there. Fucking taser squad. You've got the freaking, you've got fire brigade, ambulance. And bear in mind, I've not committed one fucking crime. I've not done one thing. So anyway, I've ended up getting carted away. I've surrendered. I said to the feds, I was like, all right, come on, I'll give up. Let's go, yeah? <laughs> so I've walked into my kitchen and he's completely CS gassed me, covered me in it, yeah? Mm. I've just got bogeys hanging out my nose. I look a mess, you know what I mean? And then I'm, I'm saying to them, wipe my face. They wouldn't let my missus come near me to wipe my face. So then now that's happened and now I'm fully wanted now. I'm on the run. My baby's due to be happening my life has gone upside down i'm living out of a stolen car i can't sleep yeah because i'm fucking stressed about everything that's going on so i'm drinking i'm in my freezing cold car at night i'm having to drink so i could go to sleep and all this has happened because you've got jealous little shit cunts i call mm. them you know what i mean all because i've want to change my life and and and, and do good now yeah. people don't want to people don't want to see people achieving you know so then basically i'm running out doing what I'm doing. And on that particular day, I didn't do anything. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to go in there. I didn't have to do anything, but I had some stolen stuff that I needed to sell. I needed to live. I need to, like, I'm trying to, my missus is going to, is going to have my baby. I know I'm going to be in prison. So you must understand the mindset behind this. I'm going to jail and I think I'm going to go to jail for years. Yeah. Right. So I fucked up being a parent. Yeah. Because I didn't know how to be a parent. So this, to me was like the holy grail you understand that it's like i've got my opportunity now to be a good dad yeah to have a family that i've always cr like really craved for and i want i found the right woman i want to do this now this is my moment to shine so to speak yeah now i'm wanted so my head is fucked i want to kill everybody that's upset me i want this bro to die I want that bitch to die for her lying, fucking swearing and all of her shit that she done and caused me all of this grief. And that's how my head is at that precise moment because everything's just upside down. I never thought I'd be back in this situation again when I left the jail, you know, so my head is totally messed up. So I'm trying to get money together, trying to give money to my missus, trying to make sure my missus goes, when I go to prison, that my missus have enough money there to make sure that her and the little babies are okay and everything. So that's on my head, you know. So then end up getting um into an altercation with one of my other friends. My car got smashed up here, so I needed another one. So I phoned one of my pals, he's got me another motor. And uh this day it was all doomed. It's like, you know, when you have days that things are in place to happen without <laughs> you knowing, like so I've woke up, got in the car, done what I was doing, had a fight with one guy, cars got smashed up, got another car, literally got the car within two minutes fucking pulled up outside a set of traffic lights parked up in Kensal Rise and I've heard oi that's my fucking car yeah so this this shit is this this is way it happened was insane mate so obviously I've looked up and I'm in surprise that this this car that I now own which I know is nicked belongs to that person that's screaming at me so I'm like fucking now I'm off so I've quickly sped off <sighs> within very relatively quick space of time I've got loads of police they're all obviously around me and I'm driving down this road and I've turned right. There was an unmarked car behind me. Mm -hmm. I was on the phone to my missus, yeah? And I was saying it to my bird, I think there's old Bill. I think that's old Bill. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's old Bill. Next thing, I've turned into a little side road and there's one, it's a one lane road, but cars parked either side. And as I've caught into that, into that road, there's a geezer pushing his car up the road. So his car's broken down. This is my luck this day, yeah? <laughs> this is where it all had to happen, <laughs> isn't it? So he's pushing the car up the road. The only thing I could do is hit his car, mm. try and ram his car up the road a little bit more. And then I've realized the police van's pulled up there, so I can't do nothing. Oh, yeah. So the only thing I can do now is just go in, 
reverse, isn't it? So I've just put it in reverse and smashed the front of the police car off, rammed the fuck out of them. And then uh, next thing, the police are all attacking the car. So I've smashed into the car in front of me again, tried to ram them again. Um, yeah, and then the car's all smashed to pieces. I've ended up getting battered. As whilst I'm getting battered, they pick me up off the floor and he's like, I'm arresting you for attempted murder. And I'm like, what? I, I ain't tried to kill anyone, mate. And I, but I'm saying it. Uh, obviously, I'm in bits. I've been smashed to pieces. My fucking face is all cut up from the glass. My hands are all busted. My back's busted. I'm in bits, yeah? But then he's trying to nick me for, that's a serious crime, attempted murder. I've never tried to attempt to kill any of these feds at that particular time, you know what I mean? So I'm shouting out, what are you fucking on about? I ain't tried to kill anybody. You, in a dark car, it's dark at night. You're not wearing fucking police clothes and you're all in dark clothing. So how the fuck did I know you was even there? Anyway. So I get arrested for attempted murder, various driving offences, mm. uh, and a load of other crimes that I was uh, wanting for questioning at the time. So I get into Wembley, get to Wembley Police Station, and the cop of the desk sergeant turns around. And she's like, oh, you're the most wanted person in Wembley at the minute. And I was sitting, I was thinking, how's that possible, man? Because I'm in Wembley every day. You know what I mean? So anyway, I get arrested for attempted murder times two. I get arrested for... Um, Loads of driving offences, ramming police, resisting arrest with a vehicle, all of that stuff. So then I get to court. Now I get into court and I'm being told, um, obviously his, the, my ex's buddies, yeah, the ones that instigated all of this, his case and my case is now all being pushed together. So I've got his case, which is causing an affray, assault, um, hammer, uh, ve um, I forget what it's called now, an offensive weapon, um, and a range of other, I think there's about 10 different indictments, yeah, or offences, shall I say. And I've, I've ended up turning around to um, my solicitor saying, like, this is what we're up against. We're up against, obviously, the, um, the, the attempted murders, the GBH is Section 18s. So what they've done is they've turned around and they've said to me, um, to, they're going to convict me. Basically, I'm going to have a trial for all of these things. You've got, you've got your plea dates in it, so you've got a plea. So I'm saying I'm not pleading guilty to nothing because my plan is now, this guy who started all of this shit off in the first place, he is coming to the dock. I want him in court because I know his name ain't what he's saying it is. So now his name is that. I want him in court because as soon as he's in court, Sam the man, my solicitor, yeah, will then turn around and be like, what's your name? So your name on that statement, if you turn around, like, do you know what I'm saying? So this basic case ain't going to stand. This case ain't standing in my eyes. So that's how I'm thinking. That's what my mindset is. Let's get him in court. So we get him in, we, we try to get him into court, but then the CPS are throwing deals at us. They're like, right, we'll drop the two attempted murders on, on police and we'll drop them to two Section 18s, attempted, uh, attempted GBH with his Section 18, yeah, which you know yourself is one down from attempted murder. I'm still getting 10 years maybe 10 for each one of them you know what i'm saying so there's no benefit in me doing this deal with them so they've then turned around and i'm like oh, fuck off i'm not doing no deals we're going not guilty I'm, i want him in court get the little dickhead in court is my attitude yeah so i want him in court they said right no more deals mm -hmm. they've ended up throwing this deal at me yeah and their deal was this we drop this section 18s both of them but completely drop them out, yeah? So you never try to assault any copper. You never try. So I'm like, all right, I'm interested now because I'm thinking, well, I'm going to get 10 years for each one of these anyway. Whatever I get with this guy, it's nothing. You know what I mean? Getting him to court is the most important thing. But then when they're saying to me, right, we're going to throw these other things out of the way, you start weighing them up in it. You're thinking, well, look, I'm only going to get six months for this, but I'm going to get fucking 10 years for this, maybe 12 years for that. Bear in mind, I've just finished the fucking... 12 year sentence reduced to eight so my head's already fucked i can't be doing it anymore but mm. and that's the, the mindset yeah so they've ended up throwing out all of these serious charges and obviously my case is to get him into court in it that's the most important thing get this guy into court because as soon as he gets into court i'm going to walk away from them other cases so but when they drop the section 18 drop the attempted murders you'd have to be an idiot not to take these mm. deals these are years of your life. And I've already spent over 10 years of my life in sales. So my attitude is I've just took the deal. 
took the deal so they've ended up doing me for common assault would you believe it and this is what i mean by the this is what i mean by the cps yeah the crown prosecution service yeah to protect an informer because this is what they've done my solicitor told me this man's a fucking grass this name is a grass name this is his fucking name his name is this he's using that i know that's not a real name so therefore we know this is a fucking informer name yeah so now he's in court or sorry i'm in court they're throwing a deal at us they're not they're not wanting like how can you this is what i mean how can you drop attempted murder yeah how can you throw an attempted murder out not just one but two yeah and then drop all of that down and then and then give me the deal and be like yep we'll, we'll give you fucking common assault we'll give you what's it resisting arrest with a vehicle so you're going to drop a, a, a crime that carries 10 plus years to protect this little bastard do you know what I mean? And that's what it boiled down to. You know what I mean? But do you know what? It's it's this is what I mean. It's it's it, that there is the same as the instance that happened when I was a kid. Mm. You know what I mean? And and I tell you how it how it's a similar sort of thing. Yeah, when I was a kid, yeah, the authorities didn't believe anything. Yeah. Now the three year old boy don't lie, innit? Yeah, three year old boys don't lie about shit like that. Yeah. So he ends up going in care. Sorry, I ended up getting abused, sorry, when I was free. The same copper that interviewed, uh, took my statement then and took my mum's statement has then turned around to, um, I've gone into care and I've been assaulted by another member of staff, yeah? And I've told the authorities. Now, the same copper that took my statement when I was free took my mum's statement was the same copper that took the interview many years later. Holy when shit. Other, yeah, which I find very weird, yeah? Now, my mum's turned around and the cop was like, Roberts, Roberts, I'm clicking his fingers, Roberts, Roberts, I know that name, I know that name. And my mum turned around and was like, yeah, you were the one who took the thing. And he was like, oh, that was just pushed under the carpet, that was just shoved under the carpet. So the police knew what happened. They protected the pedo, yeah, right? And then, you know what I'm saying? It's the same shit, isn't it? And it has been like that <sighs> for fucking years, mate. Honest to God, it's been like that for as long as I can remember, up until I stopped being a criminal. Mm. You know what I mean? <sighs> so how much time do you end up doing on that final one then? On that last did one, you serve? I done, on the last one I done, I got, I got, how long did I get? I got 12 years reduced to eight and then I done about four and a bit years out of that. So when was it you actually got released? I got released in March the 20th, 2015. 2015. And then there's the story of you getting your ear bitten off comes after that? Yeah, the story that my ear got bitten off in 2016. <laughs> Uh, that was a weird one. Um, it's fucking never ending. Yeah, it's just like one fucking thing after another. It has been like that up until a couple of years ago. But uh, the year, uh, I'll tell you exactly what happened with my ear. I weren't going to tell anyone this, innit? So this is like literally, I was going to save this for my book. But I've got other bits in my life that I can put in the book. But it was actually my brother that bit my ear off. Yeah, my older brother. Um, and... Um, fact yeah i'll tell you the joke of it yeah it is well i don't find it funny but it's mad it's because i've come out of jail i was big in it strong a lot stronger than i am now and uh i've ended up having a little fight with my brother a little fight Nothing, over what just over a normal fight just a normal fight it's just a fight man and um <laughs> he's bit me ear off because i've obviously big in him i've his fight his dog's bite trying to bite my arm off we're fighting in the hallway and uh his yeah, dog's biting your arm his dog's biting my arm but i'm remember, you got him in a lock i've got i've clamped him yeah so he can't fucking do shit like he's here in front of me and the only thing he can do is have a bite my neck and bite my ear he bit my ear in it so as he's bit it i've pulled away and the whole fucking ear come off in it well not the whole of it but a good bit of it Fuck um him. yeah so that happened he bit my ear off and now is, is he is he known for doing that kind a, of thing? This thing he's an idiot. That's the thing. I don't get on with him. I really don't like the guy. Yeah, I've never got on with him since. And to be fair, this is like I've never had anyone to teach me anything, Sean. Yeah, I never had a dad to teach me how to fucking do anything. I never had a dad to teach me how to shave. I had a prison officer taught me how to shave in Feltham on Bitten Wing. You know what I mean? So I've never had anyone to teach me anything. I've always learned it all by myself. I've learned it by watching it and I've learned it by doing it, yeah? And that is how I've learned everything. And my brother's the type of guy, yeah? He's never done anything. He's not 
see, I don't want to slate him off too much, you know, because obviously we're on TV and it's. A bit Has he got his own that. harrowing story of abuse and things? No, he's he's just he's just he's never done anything positive, you know. And I don't want to slate him off too much, but. He's got his own story. Do you know what I mean? He has got his own story, but I don't think it'd be worth listening to. <laughs> and that's to be an honest Could man. they put the piece of the ear back on? No, because a dog ate it. See what happened? <laughs> the, like, this is how it is. We're fighting. He's bit it off, spat it out. Dogs quickly ran past, picked it up and ate it. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't you give that dog a good kick? Yeah. Like, nah, I thought you could keep it. Cut it open. It, fucking have it. Keep it. I've got it. another one, ain't I? All right, I've got two. <laughs> <laughs> It's all right, man. Holy I shit. can live with it, you know. Could they mean? put like something on it, or you just can't be asked? Do you know what it was? I'll tell you, it's so painful, yeah. Because it was pissed when it happened. I was hammered when it happened. Yeah. yeah. I didn't feel the pain. And then I've what I said, I've got arrested, yeah. This is the this is where the story gets nasty between family, yeah. But I've got to tell you in it because it's in my book, so it's you know, say it how it is. So um anyway, my brother's bit me ear off. And then uh I've I've left my brother's house. I've gone off in a car, someone else's car, and I'm walking down the road and I've said to this chick, I've said, like, can you have a look at my ear? It looks a bit funny, like, it feels a bit weird. Yeah, and uh, it was cracking, like, I could feel it where the, where the cartilage in the ear was broke. I could feel it clicking. So I said to this chick, I said, like, what's it look like? And she's like, she's like, fucking hell, man, half your ear's hanging off. I was like, fuck, you got a banj, she banged me up. Anyway, I'm walking down the road, next thing, a police car pulls up and I've been arrested. Um, I've been arrested for fucking smashing my brother's car up. So I've been nicked now for criminal damage. Now I'm on license, yeah? Now I'm on license for... I had three and a bit years license then, yeah? Um, so I've come out of jail. I've had this mad sh madness with my brother. He's bit me ear off. And then I've been arrested. Now I've been told, yeah, if I don't... I'm not going to say who done this because I know legal things. But I've been put in a position where the statement that's being made against me now for damaging property, yeah, if I don't pay the hundred quid that I'm going to be going back to jail, yeah. So I paid the hundred quid. So I paid for your bastard to bite my ear off, basically. And that's how it was. He blackmailed me, man. They blackmailed me and they nearly got me sent back to prison oh, after he shit. bit my ear off. And it, and it's been like that. And and what I say is by the the teaching things, I've got a lot of venom towards my brother for the simple fact is he was my big brother. Now, I would never have let my my little brothers go through any shit like what I went through. You know, what I mean, I would have tried to help him, but he's it's a sad case. But obviously, I don't want to slate him too much. At the end of that, he is my brother. at the end of that last sentence, then did you have a plan to just not go back to crime? Well, I tell you what, it was yeah is when we got nicked for the robbery. Um, can you delete that bit? You need to delete that. Oh, take the name out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. please. Thanks. Um, when I got nicked for the robbery on her, see what it was. Um, we were active criminals. We were fucking doing a lot of crime at the time. And um, we basically robbed a hotel. And this is how it was. It, like the, the media made it out to be something great when there's nothing great to it. And I generally don't think there was anything great to it. The media made it out that there was this great big heist of an Acton Hotel and it was nothing like that at all. It really wasn't. It was nothing like that. It was just a straightforward bunch of lads going out committing crime together and that's exactly how it was. And the hotel happened. We've jumped over the counter, grabbed the guy. Weapons have been produced on him, demanded access to the safe. Um, and that was it. And, and that was literally basically it. With the other victim... I'll tell you what the police said about it. The police said on the day that we got arrested, there was we was parked up in a Tesco's car park. They said that we were there to rob Tesco's. There was a money van that was going to be there apparently at that day, and we were there to rob that machine that was being filled up. That's what they that's what they said, yeah. Um, so then we've obviously left that area, gone down to Radlett in Hertfordshire. Now I got told. I got told we're dressed, we're ready to go out to do crime, yeah? Now, the guys, the the thing that we were supposed to be doing, we didn't do. So we're starting to do something else now. So we've spoke to the lads. The lads are like, right, I know where there's something. I know where there's a property developer that they've got big bits of bits in there. The safe's in there. There's Tom in the safe. You're going to need an angle grinder, this, that, and the other. So it was like, all right, cool. We'll go there. We got told that there would be maximum two people in the building, like the husband might be there, but he's probably at work, yeah? 
but it doesn't matter if he's there anyway because we're going to get what we're going to get. Yeah, that's that's the mindset. So he's we I get weird feelings from this. You know, when I think about it, horrible. Um, yeah, so. We've gone to do the robbery now. We sat outside the place for four hours in Radlett. We didn't know that there was armed police all around us at this particular time. I didn't know that they'd been watching us for a long time. And uh, they was even following me to the zoo. Um, I went to Whipsnay Zoo and I've been followed around there by them all day. That time was pretty fucking weird. But uh, yeah, they was following us around the zoo and everything. And they was just following me for ages, 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 ages. And on this particular day, I didn't know they were following. Because after I started... When I when I noticed them and I made them aware that I was aware of them, that's when they went quiet, so to speak. I couldn't see them anymore because they, they stepped up their fucking, they stepped up their gear, innit? So we've then basically got um, waited outside this gaff. I'm on, I've got the, in, uh, the information that there's going to be a lot of jewellery in the safe, such and such. So we're like, okay, cool. So I'm sat outside the gaff, waiting for four hours, four and a half, five hours. Next thing, um, the person's turned up. As they've drove into their complex, you've got to understand big electric gates opening, like that's like in a secure compound. The gates have opened, gates are closed. The lady who who it was has come out, come out of her car, gone to the door, and it's a big, massive, like um, it's like a massive, big building that's got multiple houses in it, but it's all in a compound. So as um, as she's come up to her door, obviously I've jumped over the rent, over the fence, run up to her, and fucking grabbed her, which is fucking bad because obviously I didn't like doing things like this. It's woman, woman's like, you know what I mean? So um, yeah, so we've ended up robbing her, and it's what the robbery. I didn't like the robbery from the start, from the get go. It was just a whole day of bullshit. Things didn't turn up, and this wasn't my cup of tea. I didn't really like to do this one sort of thing that I wanted to do. Um, and then basically I've ended up doing this robbery and we removed all her jewellery. We're supposed to go into a house. That was, the, that was the thing. Go into the house, go into the home, either get them to open the safe or we'll cut it open. Yeah. So it didn't even get that far. As soon as we got wrapped her up and everything, it was just the whole thing just didn't feel, it didn't feel right. It felt all wrong. Her face yeah i've seen victims in my life in it yeah i've been a victim many 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 times and i just didn't like it and i fucking i left it there and then we walked away didn't walk away run away jumped in the car got around the corner two of the boys have got in another car we've got in this car me and my cody are driving in this car and it was weird the whole thing was scatty it's like i used to i used to think that we were quite methodical about things that we did you know we we weren't we didn't look at it as it was, um, we knew what we were doing. We knew we were doing bad things. We're going to get big time for this. And this particular thing, I just did not like. I didn't like how it was set out. I didn't like how it made me feel. And I didn't like robbing a chick. Mostly, you know, it's fucking, it's, it's muggy, isn't it? You know what I mean? And um, we, as we drove around the corner, we've parked, quickly parked up for no less than, we must have been parked up for 30 seconds max. Boys have jumped out of that car, got into that car. Me and my Cody stayed in this car. We're now driving. As I've pulled out the complex, I've seen a big blue Audi A6. And now straight away, I knew who, like, I didn't, I didn't clock, I knew who they were, but I, I didn't register, if that makes sense. You, you actually start putting all the bits of the puzzle together once you're sat in your cell, yeah? And that's what happened. I've come out, I've come, come out the corner and I've seen a big Audi A6 there, big blue one, yeah? Now I know that's what the flyer are driving in, and that's what we call the flying squad, SED7, yeah, the ones that got us. They drive all them big cars, Audis, Lexuses, and whatnot. And um, they've, uh, I've seen them, but I didn't register, so I've carried on driving. Now we're driving towards London now. We're leaving Watford area, Radlett area, heading back into London, erratic driving. So you could imagine in and out of traffic, up the motorway. We, we break up. My two Cody's go that way, I go that way. But on our vehicles, we had all listening devices, trackers. You know when they, you know when you get the flying squad in you, they're not like the normal feds, and they're the proper police. The Scotland Yard, and obviously they're high-ranking feds, and they put all bugs in our vehicles. They tracked up our cars, so they they knew where we were the whole time. So there's no matter we could have driven up the road at a million miles an hour, they still would have found us. You know, so we we all meet up in one location and we all get into the same car. 
I get into the passenger seat behind the passenger, sorry. And I'm there, I'm looking at the diamond earrings, discussing shit on the way back to the to go and get rid of these bits and bobs. Next thing we're in gold is green. And I'm sitting there, I'm looking at the stones. The next thing, a whack has come in from the right hand side, yeah. From the passenger side, this side, the driver's side, sorry, wallop. So they've hit us. I've looked and all I can see, yeah, this is my adrenaline that's gone mad now, yeah, because all I can see is people jumping out of cars and they're pulling straps out and putting caps on. Yeah, so I'm like, I've hit the driver. I'm like, fucking drive, there's fucking feds on us now. You better go, yeah. Next thing, a car smashed into us this side and that's it. That's when it all happened. All the windows started coming through. I'm seeing them all standing there with their Glock 17s shouting. And I remember the copper that was pointing his gun at me. I, I remember seeing the gun. I remember seeing the tip of it and I remember seeing his lips. It was a mad experience, man. It happened very fast as well. But it was weird. What I found weird about that was when I was on the floor, they battered us all. See, this is the thing, yeah? They put the driver, the driver was unconscious on the floor, yeah? So you got him out cold on the pavement in the middle of the road where the flying squad have just battered the shit out of him. You've got my, um, sorry, delete that. You've got my, um, you've got my, uh, my co-defendant. He's been gun butted by the feds. So you've got, the, the feds have pulled his head out of the window got the bottom of the burner and hit him in his face and split his whole eye across here. So he's all busted up. I'm all broken up in the back of the car. We all ended up going to the hospital. So I've gone to a hospital and my other three Cody's have all gone to different hospitals around London. So I get into hospital now and uh, I've kicked off. I've kicked off in the hospital for some stupid reason. Next thing I've got another hiding in the hospital. But these two are not by the flying squad. These are by some next PCs, but they've sent these big muscle bound PCs in. Yeah, they deal with like, they must have been that like, the stead squad or something like that. Yeah, because these feds are big, like, <laughs> I'm not kidding. They were big, bro. And they battered the shit out of me. They had me clamped in the thing. But you know what? I deserved it. If when I look at it, like, their attitude, this is a fucking horrible robbing bastard right now. You know what I mean? So I understand where they're coming from, you know what I mean? Because I'd feel the same way about a little Robin bastard, you know what I mean? So they did, they gave us a hiding, got to, got to, um, got nicked, went to, uh, went to court. And then when I got, when I got sentenced, obviously you get all your case papers come through and all that. And then you get a thing called a victim impact statement. Now, the thing that made me, it's so harrowing for myself to even think about this because I just feel disgusted that I've, I made someone feel in such a way, yeah? Now, I've, I've been very cold in my whole life and I, I never allowed myself to feel nothing. Didn't let people to feel for me. I don't particularly been very loved and that doesn't give me the right to be horrible to anyone, but it just shows you where I was at in my life, innit, yeah? And when I was abused, as a kid, I held on to that for many, many years. I still hold on to it now. I still have bad dreams now. I still have effects in my life now from what happened years and years ago. And I'm 30 something years later, you know? But whilst we was robbing her, what she said in her statement will never leave my mind. And it was the fact that when she was turned over, she thought that she was going to be abused, yeah? And um, I can't, like, I can't hold that inside, you know? One, I never ever meant to make this person feel like this, yeah? I never intended for her to feel like that. And if I could fucking say sorry to her and hold her hand and say sorry, I would. I'd do that right now if I could. And that's what it was. And that's what it was. That that there made me think, I can't do this no more, man. And I felt her pain because I know what that pain feels like, if that makes sense. She felt afraid that she was going to be abused. I've been abused loads throughout my life. You know what I mean? So that was that, that, that because of that, that was what made me think I can't do this no more and I don't want to do this no more. I don't want to be like this. I don't, I didn't never intend her to feel like that and she felt like that. She might have saved your life because you could have easily died, couldn't you, at some point? Well, at that particular time, I think the police wanted to kill me that day. And I'll tell you this why, yeah, because they believe, well, they said in their paperwork that they had suspicion that myself, I was in possession of two guns, you know, so they had some intel from somewhere. Um, so they were there to do a job. Had I had anything in my hand that day, might not have been speaking to you now, but yeah, it's, but it's, what it is, it's, 
it's her her impact statement has definitely made a massive impact on me because it's made me completely evaluate everything my whole path up until today has been reckless 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 lots of suffering lots of pain lots of tears people like i've had a bad life you know what i mean but then to make her feel like how i felt at such a young age and so many times in my life it's 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 despicable man and we appreciate and can see your honesty and you know that you're a good guy now and that's in the past and you've learned your lessons the yeah. hard way yeah it's, do you know what yeah. it is it's a pity you know it's sad like because it matters isn't it being a good parent is important isn't it you know and a lot of young parents of today i see a lot of young people having kids all over the fucking place like and they're not very good parents some of these people you've got kids walking out the road drunk out their mind dragging a couple of kids like that's not the behavior like i'm not blaming my mum in it like i i know my mum was young in it my mum went through fucking hell as a as a young lady in it like my dad was no good like my dad was a violent man both my 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 real dad was a violent man and my stepdad was a violent man so my mum had a lot to deal with in her own way you know what i mean and then once you do try and get help and social services take your kid off you and made her feel so shitty as they did and then it's just madness you know, it's mad, but parents need to understand that if they're going to have a kid, they need to do the job properly because if they don't do that job properly and raise that kid right, then that kid turns into someone like me, mate. And that's not a good look. Only that I've now found my my wife, my future wife, my, my, my kids, and that I'm in a stable place and I've got everything that I've fucking wanted for so long. Maybe things would be different, you know, but it's mainly that fucking fix that for me if that makes sense name out again sorry mate so we, we see this uh, uh cycle over and over again people abused and the ramifications throughout their lives and hopefully these podcasts are just waking people up to what's going on in the world people need to uh, be awake to the social services games as well because the ss yeah in my eyes are like the biggest culprits behind a lot of this nonsense that's going on in the system like you've got kids that I just do getting more trauma and more abuse in the care system mm. than they would have been having at their own family home. Mm. You understand? Like my abuse happened when I was free. I've been abused more in care than I would have happened any at home. Mm. The only abuse I would have had would have been a, which is bad, would have been a fucking Irish man beating the shit out of my mum, which is mm. terrible. Yeah, but that's that was what it was normal back then for the Irish to batter their chicks and all that. And that's how it was like my fucking father, my stepdad used to beat my mum up all the time. And it's, it's not acceptable, but that's how it was. You know what I mean? But that's the worst it would have been. Mm. In the care homes, you got some mad nonsense. Like I remember this is no word of a lie, yeah, Sean. I was in Felton, my first time I was in prison. Yeah, I was a young boy, 16 years old, yeah. And a fucking dirty Nazi screw, yeah. This is this is no kidding, and I was I was putting a complaint about this geezer. Yeah, I was sixteen years old. I was in Feltham, and a screw's come knocking on my door at like ten o'clock at night, and he's like, "Do you want a magazine?" I'm like, "What? What do you want about? Do I want a fucking magazine?" Because that's what I was like, like aggressive, like what the f you know what I mean? And he's put a porn mag under my door. Like, why's a porn? Why's a why's a member of staff in a juvenile facility? Yeah, juvenile prison. Yeah. A juvenile prison putting fucking pornographic magazines under the door obviously i knew what time it was yeah because i'm aware of this because i've had a life of this fucked up shit happening to me yeah i obviously didn't use the magazine or nothing but then you heard the fucking the flap open on the door what's he doing he wants to catch you knocking one up mm. you know what i'm saying but these these people like what you said earlier on yeah they go to places where they can fucking target these people. Yeah, like, vulnerable people. Yeah, like how vulnerable can you get? Like a kid in a care home, has no parents, has no mum, has no dad, has no relatives, has no cuddles, no love, mm. no one there to, to comfort him or her, or whatever. And then you've got a dirty, slimy pedo mm. being pedo, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and who have you got to go to, to talk to? Like you're in a care home. You cannot talk to anybody mm. like because the people you talk to are the ones that are looking after you. And nine out of 10 times, they're the ones that are doing the abusing. I'm not saying all these care homes are like this, but it happens. Like yeah. there is so much abuse in care. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not kidding. It's fucking mental. And it's all done through the care system. 
it's just it's, it's it's one of the biggest things we've had to wake up to on this channel because we're just hearing it time and time again it's everywhere mate people. it's everywhere it's yeah. uh, and I, I i can't understand how how it how it happens mate i just mm. don't understand how like, i went to dovegate yeah to try and deal with my own fucking demons i tried to do the therapy to find out why i was so angry i know why i was angry i was angry because of fucking dirty bastard took my innocence mm. you know what i mean and i'm just one person this happens on such a big scale like the care homes that i've been in like kids running away you see it all now now it's all coming out to light now that uh, now that we're all older and we can all turn around and be like actually no this is what happened and i feel i'm like one of the lucky ones because i'm actually here to tell my story mm. i'm here to be able to say no nah, this is what really did occur you know what i mean so earlier on you said you had to restrain yourself from caving that guy's skull in in Dovegate because you were trying to like self-help and use that resource. Yeah, yeah, I was trying to I was trying to work on myself, innit? Like I did, when when I seen that impact statement, I didn't want to be like that no more. I didn't want to be able to walk away from a situation and feel zero. You know, like the probation said I was a thrill seeker and risk taker, yeah. I wouldn't say I was thrill seeking at all. I was just angry. You know what I'm saying? Very angry man, yeah? And then when I went to this place, I tried to get rid of that anger because I am an angry man. I'm an angry man now. Like, right, today I'm an angry man. Tomorrow I'll be an angry man. But this, I'm only angry now because sometimes I can't sleep because I have nightmares about what's going to happen 20 years ago. You know what I mean? And that anger never leaves you, you know? So in Dovegate, there's a mixture of crimes then. There's and you have to every, listen to their stories. Everything is bad, mate. Honestly. What what kind of sh shit did you have to listen to? Um, I listened to how blokes have killed their wives, how they stabbed their wives in their throats. I listened to a geezer, uh, how a geezer put a baby in a pillowcase and slapped it off a wall. What? Yeah, yeah. There was one guy in there. Doing baby that. in a pillowcase and hit a wall with it. Yeah, smashed a baby off the wall. Um, uh, you got uh, untold did, did that baby died. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Aye, yeah. Aye, yeah. Aye. You had, a, you had a night stalker in there that was going around raping, breaking into old ladies' houses and raping them. Raping grannies? Yeah, grannies, yeah. yeah. You, oh. had a, you had the Chelsea rapist in there. Uh, the Chelsea rapist he got. And this is, this, is, this is what I used to get angry with these pedos, yeah? Because I get angry because I hate them anyway. But what made me angry about them the most, yeah, is all these pedos and nonsense, yeah? They all come up with an excuse. Oh, I was abused. Mm -hmm. I was abused. I was abused. So I come with abuse. Oh, bollocks, mate. I was abused fucking loads of times. Like, I'm not going to say how many times on camera, but it's a lot, mate. You know what I mean? A lot of abuse in my life, yeah? And I never once ever thought, let's be a nonce. You know what I mean? Never once is that thought. And, and they all make up these stories. Oh, yeah, I was abused, so I'm going to be abused. And nah, bollocks, mate. You're a nonce because that's the way you are, yeah? Like, and pedos, it's like a gay guy. A gay guy is a gay guy. A straight guy is a straight guy. If a geezer's attracted to fucking rape or attracted to a kid, there's nothing going to change that. That mm. is the way they are. So the best thing you can do is just put a bullet in their head, mate, and be done with them because there's no fixing these guys. Like you've got, you got fucking, you've got this guy, yeah, this head teacher. He went to prison for abusing kids, yeah, this guy that I was in this jail with, yeah. And he was a head, headmaster, yeah. And then he's come out of jail and how the hell is he... Uh, looking after kids he's not back in the same he's job he's back doing another, doing the same job in with kids so he, this is a teacher a head te when he got convicted he was a head teacher so how the hell is a head teacher of a school in that position when you've got convictions for fucking nonsense it doesn't make no sense whatsoever and it's like that everywhere like it's the kids though like I, I was in care homes mate I remember when I was a young kid I was in um, I went to a kid's home in Streatham yeah at the top of the hill and I was in the army cadets and my life was pretty cool at that age yeah thought it was amazing shooting guns and all that it was totally different to uh, all my other bits in my life yeah and there was a member of staff in there and I've gone mad on with, they've took me on holiday and I was a very I was a very problematic kid I was problems and I had a lot of issues yeah and I've done something and I've thrown a, a cabinet through the window of the caravan, yeah? And the guy had grabbed me, yeah? And he pushed me and he was like, they don't care anyway because they know you lie, yeah? I could basically beat you up and because they know you lie, yeah, no one's going to believe you. But you say that to a 13, 14-year-old boy that's been abused his whole life, yeah? And you're the adult. You're the adult that's supposed to be caring for that little kid. 
You understand? So it's like if you're supposed you get paid, I think the government gets something like two grand a kid a week or something like that. And it's some mad, <sighs> mad amount of money foster parents get, yeah, to look after kids. And half of these people are not in any way, shape, or form fit to look after kids. They ain't got the they ain't even got this, the people skills to look after kids. And 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 a lot of them are abusers. They might not be sexually abusing them, but they they abuse kids like mentally tell them stories oh my daughter tells me about things about when the staff were there saying to her oh your mum used to hit you your mum used to hit you and, and my baby mother's mother never ever once hit on her she was just not a very good mum because she was going through her own mental stuff mm. you know it's it's a lot of this poison is in the care system i've heard massive stories like why we're calling for this end the war on drugs and put all that money into going after the predators and the pedos because you got people doing like huge sentences for small drug possession crazy and this headmaster gets a short sentence, gets out and goes back right back goes to and work. Does it again. And I think the second time he'd done it, they gave him life with a seven. And he did it again. Or something. That, but <sighs> the, the one, when he was in jail with me on that particular time, that dirty yeah. fight, I wish I could tell you his name so your viewers yeah, can look can. him up. Yeah. <laughs> Don't find mean? him but anyway. Don't find he him needs anyway. castrating. This is the thing. You see these guys, you can't cure these people. Like the things that these, these, these place, I swear to you, mate, Dovegate, I will write a bit about it one day, yeah? But, it is a nutty gaff. Like you, the people that are in there are fucked up, mate. Like the things, the stories that you, I, I managed to stay there for, I stayed there for, I think it was about 14 months and I, I couldn't take no more. I could not take no more. I had to get out of here. So I get out of this place. Yeah. Or, or I don't know what's going to happen, but I can't I think stay one of no our other guests wrote a book about this. Yeah. In with the beast or something. Uh Terry Ellis, yeah. yeah no, that's right. Yeah, yeah but he yeah, was in Dovegate. Yeah. See now no, sorry, he was in Grendon. Now Grendon, Grendon. yeah. Grendon is Monster Mansions, isn't Monster it? Monster Mansion, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah. Now Grendon is exactly the same. Well, Dovegate is exactly the same as Grendon. Mm. The only thing is Grendon is I think it is run by the government, I think it is, isn't it? And Dovegate is run by a private company. Mm. I'm not too sure about I'll have to find out about that, but there is there is back they're based on exactly the same model as in behavior therapy where you talk about your crimes in depth so therefore all the other prisoners have to do therapy on each other it's a fucking weird place mate mm. it's not a nice place i feel more damaged going there when i come out of that place mm. i went berserk i went absolutely berserk because i came out of there i thought i was weird mm. like I, I thought like i felt soft i felt like these people had done something to my head listening to all this bullshit for for 14 months it sent me a week yeah so i came out of there and i went to the mount and I just got went crazy, man. I went into the mountain. It was just madness, fighting all the time, fighting with the govs. Then I went to uh, Brixton, had a mad fight with the govs in there, attacked them Christmas time. They had a Christmas tree on the wing. Mm. I hate Christmas, innit? When I was in jail, I hated Christmas. It was depressing. You know what I mean? So I pulled up the tree and attacked the govs with a Christmas tree and all that on B-Wing. Yeah, it was mad. It was because I was just very volatile, unhappy, sad, angry man. You know what I mean? So Ash said there were some other uh, stories you potentially had. Two attempted murders got arrested by the police for ramming place on a car. Yeah, that was with the, I think my ex partner <clears throat> and that geezer. That's the same thing when I rammed the old bill with the car. Um, and Is that got another the, name we got to take out? Um, nah, that mind about that one. That one you can leave that in there if you want. I'm not fast. Um, but yeah, to be for the two attempted murders, that was the same thing that I spoke about to you earlier. You know, okay. when I rammed the old bill in the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. So been, what's your craziest prison story? My craziest prison story. Um, I've got quite a few actually. I've yeah, had I've it. had some fucking sieges with the screws uh, where we've had big net protests on the net. Uh, me and a couple of mates uh, went into Swellside. Didn't like the conditions. Didn't like their food, so we just threw our nets up, uh, jump onto the nets, and have a protest up there. I've had fights with the govs. I got stabbed in prison a few times. Um, Over what? I got over a normal fight in one time. I got robbed on another. I got I had five guys come in my cell and uh, I had to fight for my life. And this, if I didn't fight these guys and hold on, why did they come into your cell? Because they wanted my phone, and I was getting out of jail. Yeah. See, the thing is, I was in prison. Imagine this year. I've gone to jail. I've been in jail a long time, man. So I've had a fight in one jail. I've ended up getting slashed down my chest. I've got nine stitches down my chest here. And what was that over? That's just a jail fight. I've got another. Like just a jail fight you know what I'm saying I've got scars everywhere man I'm fucking these guys have come in the cell the five guys have come five in five guys have come in the cell it's no joke yeah One of did you know they were going to come did no. you suspect I was anything? talking to two at the door it was this sort of a setup. the way they got me they sort of set me up yeah so I'm talking to two guys there and the 
big geezer, big black geezer, come up behind me and he's clamped me, yeah? But where he's so big and I'm standing in the doorway, he's just got me in the door. So next thing I've seen, this guy's tried to cut me with a, um, with a hand, like a little fucking big razor blade. Yeah? He's tried to cut me and I've realised what's going on, innit, yeah? And I've obviously I've been choked now. I'm not going to sleep because I've got my chin down on my chest, innit? You know, if you try to clamp someone, mm -hmm. you put your chin down, they can't get you. Yeah, so that's what's happened. The geese have tried to cut me um, and then I've like tussling in the cell with them, trying not to get put to sleep. The geese has opened, tried to open me up and I put my hand up like that and he caught my hand there. I don't know if you can see that one there. Is the phone inside you at this point? Yeah. So they're trying to go no, in. No, 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 no. I ain't got the phone actually in my ass or nothing like yeah. that. That phone's just out. Like it's in my pocket. You on know what I mean? Pocket, yeah, because yeah, in Pentonville, yeah. everyone's got everything. So <sighs> you, you don't need to have it up your ass or nothing like yeah. that. It's just in yeah. your pocket like mad so i've been clamped guy's gone to cut me i put my hand up he's cut my hand next thing like we're fighting in the cell he's gone to cut me again he's cut one of my eyebrows there and i'm thinking later this is really gonna fucking this is getting a bit mad now yeah so he's gone to cut me again and i've held onto the knife this time i grabbed the knife yeah and i've always been strong in it i'm a strong guy yeah so i've held onto the knife i now i'm in the toilet yeah in the in Pentonville, you've got C ring. You've got some toilets, you've got a separate cell. So you, you've got the cell here, but next door is like a toilet, but it's a part of the joint and cell. So I'm in there now. Now I'm on the floor, the breast stamping on me, yeah? So I've got one of them stamping on me, one of them kicking on me. I've got hold of this guy's knife, yeah? This guy has got a band around his knife. So he's holding onto his knife. So he's got the knife in his hand, yeah? And he's got a cord going around his wrist. Yeah, so I can't get the knife off him and cut him with it. Yeah, that's how it. That's why you do it. You're in the jail. You've got a, you've got a tool. You have a string on it, so it's around your wrist, so they can't get the knife off you and do to you. So anyway, I've got hold of this knife. I'm holding onto it. Your man's stamping on me. Yeah, this is madness. Honestly, it's really going on. Yeah, I'm getting battered in this cell. I'm holding onto the knife, and I'm just thinking, I'm trying to snap the knife in in my hand here. Yeah? So if I can snap the knife, I've got the knife. Yeah, all I'm caring about is my face, isn't it? Yeah. I don't want my face to get cut to pieces, in it, yeah? So that's what I'm thinking, not my fucking face, yeah? <laughs> Hands, arms, whatever, head, sweet, not my face, yeah? So, um, yeah, I'm trying to fight these guys. They must have been battering me in the cell for a good while, though. And, um, yeah, they fucking absolutely smashed me to pieces, man. They did. They got my phone. They, they robbed me. Um, but they, where I had hold of this bear's knife, he couldn't cut me no more. So that all they had was their feet and their legs, yeah? So that I've got a little slice here. I've got a slice on my hand here and like my hand is in bad way now obviously i've been holding on to this he's like that so you can imagine him pulling the knife and i'm it's in my hand so he's pulling it and it's like that so i'm holding on to it i don't know if you can see the scar running down the fingers there Fucking hell, yeah. yeah so like i felt like i held on to that and as they've run out the cell he's come back and he's done me again down the back of my head so i've got a big mars bar down the back of my head yeah. as well man so i've got another one there prison I bet you've got hours and hours of prison stories, don't you? I could you? tell you loads of things about jail, man. I spent enough time in all of them. Mad places, mate. Felt um, all the way up to... I've never been to no high security prisons. Yeah. Thank God. Worst one I ever went to was Swellside. What we should do then is bring you back for a part two if you're up for it. For, yeah, because you shout, do your prison I've, stories. Yeah, shout me, man. I've got loads of prison stories, mate. Yeah. I've got stories for days. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, stories for days, mate. Is there anything you'd like to say in conclusion to the people watching this? Um... Yeah, like obviously, if you want to get in contact with me, uh, get hold of me on Facebook, Anthony Roberts, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, I don't really have a message per se, but it's just obviously having a bit of hope in it. Like When's me, your book coming out? I'm hoping to have it out for summer. That's the plan, anyway. I'm getting things underway at the minute. So, what, where is it at then? In the stages of? Um, it's still being still being typed up at the minute. So it's still being typed up. Yeah, still being typed up. So I've got someone doing the typing for me, man. Yeah. So I'm, I'm dyslexic. That's what it is. I can't read yeah. and write. I can read. I just can't write in it. And have you got stuff. a publisher yet? I haven't. Not yet. I haven't. I haven't. Well, I have a publishing company, so I'd be interested in tech. Yeah, but well, to be yeah, fair, yeah. I've got loads of stories, mate. Honestly, yeah, dating yeah. back to the 80s. So mm -hmm. it's, 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 if, yeah, we'll have a chat. We'll yeah, have a chat yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. Camera, but yeah. Um, have you thought of a title or anything? I have. I have. Go on. I'm not going to tell you yet in case someone nicks it. <laughs> secretive <laughs> <laughs> all right hope you have enjoyed this podcast please let us know in the comments what you thought all of anthony's links are going to be in the description box please Cheers. please go down and support his work man he's, he's such a good guy coming here 
and we can see you've been fucking through it, man, and been you've come it, out man. the other end smiling. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't good... say I'm smiling. So I'm, <laughs> I've got some battle wars, got some old scars and whatnot. But uh, yeah, man. Do you know what it is? I just don't want anyone else to think that it's cool doing all the shit. No, I did, they, man. they've got that from because you. you know what Definitely. it is. Man? It's a painful world, man. Yeah, you bleed a lot if don't, you live like that, mate. Honestly, don't get gangsterizers. Keep yeah, the day it, jobs. Man. Yeah, keep, yeah, be, be happy. Isn't it? <laughs> Huge thank you to all the new subscribers. Subscription logos in the bottom corner of the screen. Huge thank you to people who've gone down into the description box, clicked on Anthony's links, and clicked on our links, our um, socials, playlists, and donation links. Huge thank you to Joe and James coming out and doing all this in the freezing cold with us today. Yeah. <laughs> right. Give us a <laughs> Cheers, guys. Cheers. Top yeah, man. yeah, yeah. Thanks, Anthony. Well done. See you later, everyone. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. Sweet, man.